And on the third day, they rose to finish book one of Strange Aeons. <laughs> Grant does the countdown. He goes, all right, your mics are live at five. He goes, ten, nine. He gets down five, four, three, two. And I go, ah. And he goes, and one. <laughs> <laughs> really threw you off for that your year. 11 You're second a, countdown. Yeah, I know. I forgot to fade out the theme. They, I think they heard you starting to say something and uh, over the, the splash screen. So uh, sorry about that. <laughs> Three, two, and one. It's a new system. It's a new system. We're still it's figuring out. Uh, we made it, guys. We made it till day three. Uh, we did it. We did not it. only that, for everyone except Grant, this is our fifth day in a row recording. And uh, that's that's a lot. Wow. That's a lot for uh, for the team. Um, but if you factor in all the hours Grant has spent this week figuring out the new system that we're using, uh, we're all we're all exhausted. But uh, <laughs> it's the last leg of the marathon. We gotta muster up strength and finish strong. I was thinking right before we went live, like uh, I, I did, uh, I ran finished four books of Jade Region. We were about to you know, we were deep into five when we started this business. Uh, four books of Giant Slayer. We're at the end of five. Uh, three books of Dead Sun. So that's uh, a eleven. I've done 11 like ends of books and they're, they're an exciting time. It's, it's, it, but it's, it's, it's bittersweet because you love finishing a book. It's like, I accomplished something. You can put it on the shelf. Don't have to worry about that book anymore. Um, it's a little bittersweet. Like, Oh, I really like that story. Now we don't get to play that anymore. That's all right. I'm excited for the next story. But, uh, the ends are always wild, uh, especially the way we play. Cause you know, I am usually knives out, uh, for, uh, ends of books. Uh, things can get hairy and this book, uh, I don't have to do too much to make it crazy it is going to be wild you guys get to see it live <laughs> <laughs> you get to see us completely collapse psychologically live <laughs> uh yeah i mean this is it's it's just crazy i'm so glad that we're we got to do this because i just i wanted to finish this book for so long and i was going over in my head like where we would have been on the tour for this to happen and you know a million things could have changed but there's a good chance that the first part of this session tonight would have happened in seattle and the second part would have happened in Columbus. The finale would have been in Columbus. Uh, those could have been interchanged. The finale might have been in Seattle during PaisoCon. I don't know. Uh, but then that means that Gen Con, we would have been in book two. So uh, as Joe pointed out to me when I told them this before the stream, uh, technically we're still behind, which is <laughs> astounding after 12 hours this weekend. Um, but how do you guys feel? Like, how do you feel about a book? Obviously, I know, I know what's on the the table. Grant knows because he read it. But like, what do the rest of you <laughs> feel going into this? You already know what you're up against at the beginning of tonight's sesh. I'm just scared, to be honest. I just I've heard from you for 18 months that it's absolutely brutal, the book, and that you don't expect people to survive. And then you reiterated multiple times last week. You know, bring your backup characters. I guarantee death. I guarantee death. And now here we are. Now, uh, obviously, we have one death uh, on the books, but I don't think that you were counting that encounter as one of them. So I'm like, I'm just really worried. I'm really worried because I don't want it to end with a TPK, basically. That's my mm. fear. Uh, and I want to try to push through no matter what. But the thing is, this is, this is cosmic horror, man. Like a TPK is like, that should be expected. With, like, the kind of horrors that you're going to be dealing with. Uh, and I have no idea what to expect. So, yeah, I'm a little frightened. Yeah, when you play Cthulhu-type games, winning isn't the usual outcome. It's surviving, but with horrible loss or, like, right. barely getting out of there. Um, be interesting to see for you guys and for everyone else watching how closely uh, Paizo uh, mimicked that sort of uh, Cthulhu-esque way of playing. Grant, what about you? How do you feel? Feeling um, very nervous given uh, how jam packed the end of this book has been with encounters. I don't know if we could have gone about it a different way, but hard encounter versus hard encounter versus hard encounter. Everyone seems to be able to take uh, one of our poorly formed party out of the fight uh, for multiple rounds. I mean, especially with three of these things at us. Just think about that battle where Sir Julia had to keep on kicking Halster awake. Now two <laughs> others could close in potentially. And it's a nightmare. It's a true nightmare. It's, it's a wonderful job by the Paizo team of creating a real nightmare here. 
Uh, Matthew, you obviously, uh, you suffered the, the big loss so far this weekend, but, uh, your new character had a, an outstanding first sesh yesterday. Um, how are you feeling going into this? I, I kind of, as I logged on today, I could hear you guys, uh, plotting a little bit about what your plans were. So I took my headphones off and kind of just played silent observer. Um, you seemed confident, but then you were like, well, no, I think there's something else going on here. How do you feel? I would say confident is a is a drastic overstatement. I, I, <laughs> we have a coherent plan that uh, we fully expect to be, you know, subverted within the first yeah. round. Thwarted <laughs> immediately. immediately. But Troy's like, just then. You know what I mean? As soon as at he says those moment. two words, yeah, at, at that moment. Hmm. Like, you know, it just, it's over. Anything you expected, throw it out the window. Do you remember the old uh, Facebook uh, relationship status? It was like you used to be able, I think it was Facebook, maybe it was MySpace, where you had the option, it's complicated. Yeah. It's complicated. <laughs> Tonight, that would be the theme uh, for the, the rest of this. It's it's complicated. <laughs> uh, Skid, uh, you've been a veteran of many of uh, finishing books, uh, going all the way back to second and first edition. Uh, how do you feel going into tonight? You, you, got, you got that story out of Aldo, obviously a, a huge reveal at the end of last session that some people are still sussing out, whereas a lot of people online uh, have already figured out what's going on there. Uh, you got that out now, or are you just ready to die? I'm ready. Uh, I'm more ready. I'm, more, I'm always more concerned that it's going to be really frustrating, which you warned us that it probably would be. <laughs> That's worse than dying. I know. That's worse than death. But there is something else that I want to address. Uh, the, the wombat in the room, as it were. <laughs> I, got, uh, I got a few messages last night. I, uh, during our session last night, I addressed Atticus in character, saying he looked very tired. So I said, mate, you look rooted. I, I used the word rooted. And I got some messages from some of our, Austra our lovely Australian fans saying, <laughs> you know, that word doesn't mean what you think it means. <laughs> it is a very rude word that means you've been, you've been like, fuck. That means a word that means fucked. And it's like we were all laughing at how stupid you sounded when you said that <laughs> word because it's a, you looked so ridiculous. We, and we all were got all laughing at you. We all got together here in Australia and <laughs> laughed and laughed. Yeah, we all had a bunch of Foster's beers and showed each other knives, and we were laughing and laughing at how dumb you fucking are. <laughs> so I just want to. I just want to say, so for anyone who doesn't know, I've been working off a spreadsheet compiled by our, our longtime friend and fan, Todd Oneout. It's a list of Australian terms. And according to his sheet, I'll tell you what I was looking at. <laughs> He's got the proof. He's got I, the receipts. Yes, the pr <laughs> yes, I got the receipts. So the primary <laughs> usage, according to him, of root is, yes, fuck. But a secondary use is to, to look exhausted, to be exhausted. So it was an intentional double entendre on my part, which may or may not have been an unintentional single entendre that completely elided the main use of the word that I wanted to use. <laughs> so I'm announcing here and now that I am at least temporarily suspending all use of the spreadsheet <laughs> until you people can achieve some measure of consensus over your own fucking language. <laughs> That's you, it. They, they did this to themselves, Skid. <laughs> they did, and I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't sound sorry. No. <laughs> I guess I'm more angry than sorry, but I've, I'm... You know, it's, these words, these have more than one meaning. <laughs> so you, it's, it, you got to read into it. Skid, you need to add to your list of fears uh, being corrected. <laughs> that would definitely be at the top. That would definitely be at the top of the list. That goes above Jim Crochet above. now. Being yeah. corrected. It's you, above uh, centipedes. Oh, yeah, there's wow. the shirt. Oh, there's the is. famous shirt. Oh, man. Being corrected is definitely at the top of the list. Sorry, I can't believe I forgot it. To think that started uh, in L.A. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that yeah. started in L.A. God. And now here we are about to wrap this up. And we're wrapping it up. I saw some people in chat last night. Oh, LaFalle, he's never going to... It's happening. We're finishing it tonight. Um, 
Well, that's why we're know. starting at four. I mean, we're going to yeah. at least 10, 30, 11, right? No, I think we'll be, I, I, I want to finish early. Honestly, I'd love to be like having dinner at 630. <laughs> it's not going to happen. But uh, there's a chance we might finish early. That would be great. Um, if not, uh, we're finishing one way or another. And I'm, I'm excited <laughs> to just jump right in. Oh, no. Uh, before I do, though, obviously, the part of this weekend was the marathon. Part of this weekend was uh, boosting up the Patreon to make up for this uh, big blow we took uh, for losing all these legs of the tour. Um, and, of course, the Nash have responded uh, with overwhelming generosity, taking advantage of the new annual memberships that we offered all weekend long. Uh, that's going to end tonight uh, at the 5% discount, at least. Uh, Joe, do we figure out yet if we're going to keep the annual memberships but lose the discount for right now, maybe bring the discount back here and there? What do we decide? Uh, the annual memberships will go away after this weekend. They may come back uh, at no discount. We have to basically, it, this is, consider this like a, the 5% discount is both a sort of a fundraiser of sorts for us for 2020 and also kind of a beta of this annual plan system. So yeah. we want to take a look at what shook out over the weekend, look at the numbers, and uh, then take probably a couple months just to see what people are thinking about it. And uh, and then, yeah, I ex fully expect it to come back. And then uh, if you ask me, look, no guarantees, but I fully expect to have like discounted annual memberships on Black Friday and stuff the like Black that. Friday so, membership. Yeah. yeah. Discount. So uh, I, I think we'll do weekends like that. I thought it was funny that it was this weekend instead of next weekend, which, you know what I mean? Because like that Labor would be Day. A Labor Day sale. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> this is when we were doing our, our marathon. So but that's kind of the idea to me. It's like pick a pick a weekend, a few weekends a year and do sales like this. I think it'd be fun. Listen, <clears throat> yeah. when there is a tier that offers mattresses to our supporters, then we can have the Labor Day sale. <laughs> that's <laughs> in a President's Day sale. It'll happen when we team up with Sleepies or Casper or someone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we just, we'll, the let's let's make a uh, let's make a thirty five thousand dollar tier. <laughs> and then we'll do uh, every year. We'll do the December to Remember uh, event where you get a Lexus because you you pledged the thirty five thousand dollar tier. <laughs> My dad hates those commercials. He's like, oh yeah, you just put a bow on it. It's a Lexus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it really is preposterous. Such a right. slap in the face of every blue collar man and woman <laughs> out there. Really it's like is. I'm going to buy you a car as a surprise, <laughs> right. a fifty thousand dollar car. <laughs> It's like, the, you know how much the bow alone must have cost? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, what? Ordinary people have to plan and save. <laughs> It's yeah. also going like, to throw a car great. at somebody parked in their fucking garage in secret <laughs> dun, overnight. Dun, 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 it's also dun, a very dun, presumptuous dun, dun. gift. It's like giving someone a puppy. Yeah. Like, but now right, here, you, you take care of this. Right. <laughs> Would now be a, child. a bad time to reveal <laughs> my father at the height of his attorney earning power purchased my mom a red Cadillac, I believe El Dorado, with a big pink bow in our garage yeah. when I was like six. I mean, so when you saw those commercials, commercials, but yeah. So when you saw those commercials during like as football playoffs were getting close, you were always like, "Oh yeah, that's what people do. Like, that's what everybody <laughs> oh, does." The insanity. Like, we looked at it. We're like, "What a <laughs> that's like a holiday joke commercial every year." The insanity of where I grew up is <laughs> when I started my growth spurt. I thought to myself, "Well." Looks like I'll never buy a Ferrari because I can't fit in one. That was what I thought. <laughs> I thought I'd just be able to purchase one. My my earnings in life have turned out to be way below the ability to purchase a Ferrari. But that was the craziness. That's why I'm kind of glad to be out of there. Uh, because it's not relatable to anyone in any way whatsoever. Uh, well, I expect that level of gift giving if we ever do the glass cannon secret Santa. Around the office. Oh, um, man, I hope, I hope Grant pulls me. I hope Grant pulls me. <laughs> I, might get a Ferrari. Ferrari. I might get an Eldorado. You'll get my mom's <laughs> 1993 Eldorado. I'll find it from a junkyard, and I'll get a nice new bow for it. It's <laughs> uh, like you wanted. In addition to the annual memberships, which, like we said, a lot of people have been taking advantage of, you have until the end of the night tonight uh, to get uh, to get the membership and also to get it at a discount. Uh, we also released a bunch of new goals. We already hit the seventy thousand dollar goal. We hit it on night one. We might hit the seventy one tonight. We're at seventy seven eleven right now. We need to get to seventy one uh, for cannon fodder to uh, move to Twitch and be released in audio to our new ten dollar uh, premium audio tier on Patreon. Um, 
but be sure to check out the uh, the Patreon to see all the new goals. Uh, Grant, I don't know if you have the graphic up there, but if you want to toss it up there, 70, 71, 72, all the way to, of course, Glass Cannon Con at 75. Uh, and then last night we delved a little deeper into what of the what the goals look like after 75, but uh, there were a couple we didn't uh, touch on that I'm going to talk about very briefly right now, uh, one of which being the animated pilot at 90,000. Well, what does that mean? Uh <laughs> It's something we've always wanted to do. You know, one thing we, we, we always talk about is like growing the business. It's become a, a sort of a catch-all phrase for us for like just getting more people to uh, in- join the NACE and enjoy what we do. Um, and we think, not, not unlike playing 5e or offering 5e content, uh, getting to animate some of what we do in some way, shape, or form uh, would be a great way of uh, expanding the business. So what form will that take? Will it be glass cannon? Will it be... Uh, uh, one of our other shows, you know, we don't know yet. We have a, a bunch of ideas and we've talked to some animating uh, animation houses and whatnot, but uh, that's $90,000 a month. We're still a ways off from that. We just think that if we get there, we'd be able to make a small, short pilot presentation that we'd be able to shop around to networks to then be able to see if we could turn it into a full on fucking show. Um, I think too, if I could chime in, I think some of the anim or not animated, some of the scenes, the battle scenes we've had drawn and illustrated have gotten me really excited for that idea. Being able to extrapolate those out to be in full motion and to have development into them and lead up into those. If it works out, it would be amazing to see. I would just love to watch that. Even if I weren't a part of the show, it'd be so cool to see some of these battles, these intense dungeon fights and just otherwise the story play out that way would be great i mean it's a great format i love that it's I, like Harmon quest has done it on CISO, and they and it's great but they have a very different approach to storytelling than we do it's, it's more goofy and a lot of guest stars and they're not very rules heavy by any means so to see it that approach with our kind of thematic uh, sensibilities i think would i think it'd be so cool this is like real serious action Mm. And that animation, I think it'd be fucking awesome. So it would yeah. kind of remind me of like when I was like a ten or eleven, and the first time I saw like a really violent like Fist of the North Star or Giver or Ninja Scroll. Like right now, that seriousness I feel like is kind of missing in that space that our battles have a lot of the time. As much as we joke around, I love the visceral yeah. nature and toughness of our battles. Yeah, really combine cool the yeah the humor and that the action in that way it would be really neat. <laughs> Just seeing what our friend, uh, friend of the friend of the pod, Austin uh, f- f- Fr. Eckel Studios, makes these animatics. Uh, we've he's done some of Glass Cannon, obviously the Barry Broadfinger uh, one, which is one of my favorites, <laughs> and the one with the uh, prostitute hairdresser from Androids and Aliens. Uh, and then he's been doing some of Side Quest and some of Delta Green. I mean, just seeing those sort of rudimentary animatics Dude, the Delta gets you Green. so fired up. I mean, the Delta Green of like the accoutrement. On, on Ralph Macchio's desk at work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that <laughs> yeah. is just so phenomenal. Like that's not in the show. That's added by right. the animators. You get other minds involved in it and the imagination just explodes. And anyway, I'm, I'm excited. I'm very excited at that prospect of the, the pilot. The pilot. the pilot. I've never done a pilot. Troy's done a lot of pilots. Yeah, they did. Nothing ever happened. They, with they them. all failed. Yeah. Uh, but here, <laughs> they led me to you guys. <laughs> 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 and then uh, at a hundred thousand, uh, I will watch this movie you guys been talking about. But that deal is off the table if we don't hit a hundred thousand by eight p.m. So it's up to you guys. How bad do you want it? I just rewatched it. It's How on Netflix, you it? and it's it never been easier to watch it. Yeah, no interest. Don't care about dinosaurs. Don't care about pirates. <laughs> Pirates? 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 What the Don't fuck care about them. No, no, no. But you're, you're also missing there. The first Pirates of the Caribbean is one of the greatest master classes of cinematic storytelling ever made, in my opinion. I've, I think that that is an exaggeration. It's no, no, never no. seen it. For an action film like that, it is perfectly paced. The screenplay I, is gorgeous. The character development is great. Like, it's just <laughs> wonderful. That's you're what they always about, say. About Chinatown and Pirates of the Caribbean. No, the Chinatown's two a better film overall, of the American cinema. But we're not, we're not arguing at Kim's video right now, Troy. We're just enjoying <laughs> things for enjoyment's sake, right. you piece of garbage. Uh, well, yeah, I, I mean, it's the way, get into it. it. It's the debate that I always have about the Matrix uh, sequels. When it comes to like the Matrix Revolutions, I'm always like, well, I'm not comparing the Matrix Revolutions to Chinatown. 
I'm comparing <laughs> the Matrix Revolutions to like big budget science right. fiction action movies, a lot of which are terrible. Mm -hmm. This one is tolerable. You know what I mean? So like, but people are like, it's such a terrible movie compared to blah, blah, blah. It's just like, keep it within its zone. And so if you look at an action movie, it's really good. <laughs> I just need to return for a second. Troy, are you just issuing a blanket statement about dinosaurs and pirates, or do you believe that there are pirates in Jurassic Park? Because I feel that's what I that's what I heard. <laughs> that's no, I was like. just I was just putting that on there because I know once I watch that, they're gonna be like, Oh, you gotta watch Pirates of the Caribbean next. And I'm like, I don't wanna watch that crap either. I don't care about dinosaurs and pirates. But if there are pirates in Jurassic Park, I don't care if we hit hundred thousand. I'm not watching it. <laughs> not doing it. I'll, I'll renege on it. What about? Are Is you, there a pirate in it? No, that's why I was confused. <laughs> but are you? Does anyone ever go R? Even like jokingly? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Think about it. I mean, there's corporate oh, piracy. Actually, actually, <laughs> there are. They are mentioned in Jurassic Park. Pirates I'm, are mentioned in Jurassic Park. Oh, yeah, that's Park. true. There is a joke I'm going about into pirates. Patreon right now and editing the goal. Um, <laughs> what are you? Are you opposed to pirates of all kind? Like, have you seen Captain Phillips? No, no. Is that the one I'm the captain now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no. That's like, you mean like Somali pirates? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to get Troy on the record to say he's pro-Somali no, cool. pirate? They're no, I'm cool. Just to, I'm just trying to figure out where the boundaries of Troy's, uh, Troy's taste are. I think they're cool. I don't know what, I don't know what they're cool. cool. <laughs> uh, the are they cool? Way. Are we supposed to be okay with them? They're if decidedly you get uncool. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you get an Oscar nomination for playing a, a, a pirate, would you watch that film? Like, with someone you're like, oh, if I was nominated nom for an Oscar, no, no, not you. There's someone you're like, oh, that has an Oscar nominated portrayal of piracy. Uh, no, 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 I would not. I don't care. I don't care about the Oscars. They're not going to make me. Well, how many Oscars did Jurassic Park win? A couple, actually. For um, what? Visual effects and sound and sound design. Yeah. Well, final question. Here we go. What about? Muppets and pirates. Ooh. Now you have my attention. <laughs> <laughs> you had my interest. Now Troy. You my attention. So we need to do some genre mashups to yes. get you into the pirates and the dinosaurs. You t I'll tell you what, if Jurassic Park was done with puppets and uh, an occasional frog, uh, I, I would get into that. It's funny because there are frogs and puppets in Jurassic Park. That's true. <laughs> That's very true. I'm not lying. I mean, it's got, it's got everything. You know, Everything it doesn't. You have already like Jim Henson's except voice, except for Somali pirates. If it doesn't have Jim Henson's voice, I'm out. It does have. It does have Stan Winston's animatronics. Though. You listen to Kermit now and Kermit back then. They're two different Kermits. Well, true. Anyways, Troy, on the, for three different Kermits now. I know. On the I first hate night of uh, my my turn at GCN Employee Lounge Movie Night, I promised to watch the 400 Blows and supplement it with French readings of Cahiers du Cinéma in order to please the uh, movie snob in you. <laughs> I will join you on that viewing. Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we've got another viewing to talk about right now. The viewing of the finale of Book One of Strange Hours! <laughs> We're giving away more dice tonight. Uh, same rules that we've done all weekend long. Right, Joey Jojo? That's correct. Uh, you got to take a, a screenshot of you watching the show. And like Grant said last night, throw yourself in there. Yeah, it's Let's... been adapted today to include Grant's idea of put yourself in it too. We want to see the name. What are these? We what saw these some great shots? ones yesterday. I had them all to my story and I think we added them to our story too. They were a lot of fun to see. It was much more fun than seeing an LG TV on a, on a wall. That's for sure. Yeah, throw yourself in there. Don't be shy. Show us what you're drinking and uh, toss it up there. Tag us at the Glass Cannon on Instagram. You'll be entered to win. We're going to announce the winner around seven o'clock tonight. Uh, Two thousand viewers is still on the table. If we hit it, Norse Foundry is going to throw in a bunch of extra stuff. So let's see what happens. And don't forget, we have trivia today as well. To the final trivia question of the whole trivia run, uh, go to our story on Instagram. Down. Answer the question there if you know it. And uh, the winner will be chosen among those who answer correctly. And uh, yeah, just go ahead and give us a follow there while you're at it. Um, thank you. In the meantime, for the last time in book one of Strange Aeons, Grant, do me a favor and take it to the recap. <laughs> Good. Awesome. Good. Perfect.
That's nice. <laughs> That's real nice. Grant, you've been on fire all weekend from the Granty Theft Cam to the recaps. <laughs> Is it was that one night only, the Granty Theft? Oh, it's still back? available. Yeah, after about 10 ones in a row, it's he's thrown it out. <laughs> I need to tweet uh, out a picture. Broke. I need to pit, tweet out a picture of my setup, but I I think I have like reached near Windows 10's limit on number of USB devices connected to my computer. It is like several USB hubs, three monitors, two keyboards. Like it's just insane. I don't think this thing can stay up on my desk forever and it still be load bearing at a certain point. So I might have to remove it. Well, let me walk you through what happened yesterday. Uh, if you're just joining us and you haven't been here all weekend, you need to go back and watch what happened on Friday night because that ended with the death of Mrs. O'Lady. Spoiler alert, it happened. Ghouls came and attacked. She got paralyzed. Coup de grace, first time on the net. Work. Dead so. So yesterday, we started off by introducing her replacement, her spiritual replacement, as it were. A woman who uh, started her career, it looked like, in the world wound, during a, a Mendevian crusade, perhaps. Someone who we soon find out is named Sir Julie. Sir Julie Andrews. A uh, paladin of Saren Ray, who, after her time spent in there, cracked would you say, and was brought here to Briarstone Asylum decades ago. Decades ago. And only now is she being thrown back into the fight. So when the party brings the uh, body of Mrs. O'Lady, Cartha Malisord, back to the Apostle and Orpiment's camp, they ask Dr. Ren Elborn, is there anybody here that can help? He offers, he's like, there's an orderly that's kind of strong, but he doesn't have any powers. And he's like, well, there is this paladin, or she says she's a knight, but she's a little... You go talk to her, and she's down to clown. <laughs> so you head back to the scene of the crime where Mrs. O'Lady uh, met her fateful end and you see a staircase that's kind of dangling up above. You'll have to climb to get to this tower that Dr. Wren told you about uh, days ago that there would be one of Zandalus's own narogens there that you'd have to talk to and maybe find out what's going on uh, with this mist surrounding the asylum and, and seeping into the building itself. You get up there and you realize there's no talking to be done because unlike Eliage Losandro, the first Onergen you met, this one is fully functional. And it doesn't put out a lot of damage, but when you get close to it, you get real sleepy. And so this is what happened. You couldn't, you couldn't get in there close enough to like uh, throw a bomb or fire off a spell. And, and Halster kept trying to get in to get close and he'd fall asleep. And Sir Julie would have to spend her round waking him up and then he'd fall asleep again, waking him up. You chipped away and you finally took it out. And when it died, the mists surrounding that part of the tower outside began to thin. And you realize that perhaps the other Onerogens that are supposedly upstairs with Zandalus, if we were to destroy all of them, perhaps the mist in the island would be gone. So armed with that information, you head upstairs. You head upstairs and you find three apostles and orpiment. After the fight, you find out that they were playing cards, some gambling game with a harrow deck. But you interrupt them. They're living in relative luxury up here compared to the other apostles and orpiment in the uh, shanty town of the old asylum cafeteria. You confront them. They say, get out. You say, no, fight time couple rounds into the fight, an old woman enters from the back. It's the infamous bag lady, Agra Loomis, former serial killer who has bounced around from asylum to asylum before ending up here at Briarstone. Sir Julie, brave as shit, rushes right up to her. But then you see, even at probably 70 years old, kitten has claws. She jumps on Sir Julie and starts strangling the life out of her. You're trying to get some stuff off. A timely crit from Aldo with the bomb that ricochets off and hits the bag lady, followed by another magical crit from uh, Atticus, killing another one of the, the uh, apostles. Once they're wiped out, Sir Julie, even though she's getting strangled to death, just stabbing, stabbing, stabbing away, kills the bag lady. You look through the room, you find some gold. You look through the harrow deck and you find this strange card that has some connection to the 
race known as the Denizens of Lang. Keep that in the back of your head, but there's a war still to be fought, so you start climbing over the rubble to get into the next room. The room choked with yellow fog, and you get in there and you see not one, not two, but three Onerogens. This hall of Onerogens, the north wall of the room, completely collapsed and open to the outside. The fog seeping out of their mouth, the fog seeping into the room as well from the outside. You don't know where it ends and where it begins. To the south, in what remains of the southern wall, charcoal and chalk drawings. Charcoal and chalk drawings that if you look at them too long, it almost looks like there are little shapes moving within them. You walk closer into the room, Sir Julie says, I'm going in, walks up right next to one of these things. But all four of you just get lost in the drawings. We black out from there. And now, as the lights come up, we see a series of quick vignettes that just fade in and out of each other. We see scenes of celebrations over drinks in the home of Atticus Grimm. We've seen this home before. We've seen him and his father have arguments there. We recognize it immediately. We see him now celebrating with his friend slash rival, James Netherford. They're drinking and playing games of chance until the wee hours of the morning. Then we see Atticus now staring daggers at James, staring daggers and pouring a vial of something into a glass of wine that he smiles and hands to James Netherford. Next scene, James is now asleep in Atticus's father's armchair while Atticus sits cross-legged at his feet. Candles surround James, and intricate lines are drawn all around and between the candles. Atticus speaks under his breath, a guttural tongue of cosmic darkness. We see that he's reading directly from a tome lying open on the floor in front of him. It's titled, The Tapestry of Madness. The page itself is packed with troublesome arcane symbols, but one thing is titled in common, Mind Swap. Atticus continues his incantation and the room itself recedes into nothingness. No sooner does he believe he will finish the ritual that Atticus feels a presence in this non-space that he's created. Not James. Someone else is here. Atticus turns to see a figure half-lit by the flickering candlelight and his blood runs cold. This beast before him must be seven feet tall, conical in shape with three strange appendages. Two look almost like pincers while the third ends in some sort of hideous maw. The head has three eyes and a mass of fine tentacles dangling from where a mouth should be. Just as Atticus is about to speak, the figure makes an ear-piercing guttural sound composed of a thousand voices overlapping each other. The entire plane of existence begins to shake as this alien tongue emanates from the creature. Atticus grabs his head and begins wailing. James awakes as well from his drug-induced slumber and screams screams, and he looks and sees his friend Atticus on his knees, wailing, but for only a heartbeat before the candles are snuffed out and the world goes black. Atticus opens his eyes and now sees that he sits in the warmth of his living room. His head is pounding, though, as he looks around. He looks down, and below him on the floor, he sees himself reading from an arcane tome surrounded by candles. This can't be real. He he shakes his head to shake the obvious illusion, then opens them to find that now he's on a stage. He sees the crowd is all on their feet. They're cheering for him. He feels someone touch his arm, and he turns to see a a host facing the crowd. A, A chill goes down his spine because he sees that his own arm has the pale, hairless flesh of a human. The host raises his arm and shouts to be heard above the roaring crowd, Ladies and gentlemen, I give you James Netherford! 
At that moment, he searches the crowd intently for what he's looking for, and towards the back, he sees himself. A rat in a hat, staring daggers at the stage. At that moment, the bottom drops out beneath him. He feels like he's going to be sick. He closes his eyes and rips his arm away from the host as the cheering fades to silence. Soundless darkness envelops him once more. Atticus opens his eyes and finds himself back where he was just moments ago, in this space of pure blackness with dim candlelight emanating from an arcane circle on the floor beside him. James Netherford stands in the middle of that circle, looking at Atticus wide-eyed, a form emerges from the darkness behind James, and they both turn to look as a small, pale human girl in a faintly glowing pale yellow dress emerges from the darkness. The girl walks right past James, ignoring him, and comes to stand directly in front of Atticus. Her eyes are just like black marbles. Her hair is so thin that her scalp is visible. Atticus is frozen. He's unable to move his limbs, unable to speak, unable to breathe. The girl reaches for something and pulls a book out and holds it to Atticus. It's titled The Life and Death of Atticus Grimm by James Netherford. He looks up at the girl and towering over her behind is this conical alien from Behor. Its three appendages seemingly slick with black wetness, wrapping slowly around the slender frame of the girl. The creature's elongated neck moves in a peculiar way, and the life and death of Atticus Grimm floats from the girl's hands into the air. Atticus can't help to look as the pages fly open and flip, flip, flip several times before landing on the start of a chapter. The title, yet again, is in common. The Mind Swap. Atticus turns back to the creature and it's no longer covering the little girl. It's beginning to crawl all over him. It's wet black skin pulsing inches away from every part of his body. He feels more than hears the creature as its thunderous voice shatters his reality to pieces. And in that moment, Atticus screams in desperate pain as his own mind is ripped from his body. <laughs> Lights come back up from that blackness, the blackness of these chalk drawings on the southern portion of this broken wall. And all of you are staring, staring at these, these rudimentary drawings. Everybody roll a perception check. 18. 15. 23. 9. <laughs> Roll for initiative. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, no. They're going to come <laughs> from the pain. He's coming <laughs> from the painting. Oh, the calls no. are coming from the calls. Bad sign. Oh, man. Oh, man. 18. 18. Oh, baby, oh, it's starting. Baby. It's starting. All bets are off. This is for not all the marbles, but a lot of marbles. Most of the marbles. A great deal. More marbles than you'll ever need. <laughs> uh, Aldo, what did you roll for a niche? 22. 22. Atticus Graham? Uh, 21. 21 good rolls. You're Natty 15 to start the afternoon. Nice. Alsta Price. 16. 16. Every time I say your last name, Price, I'm like, is it, is that, is it Price? <laughs> it is, right? Yeah. <laughs> it never sounds right when I say it. Uh, Sir Julie Andrews making her, uh, give it up for Sir Julie, second, second ah. sesh. Woo. And probably her, her last. Lovely. Lovely. Uh, 11. 11. Um, all right, let's go to the map real quick here. Um, 
Oh, I have you guys on the old map. This is where I want you. Yeah. Yeah, that's the ticket. <laughs> Aldo and Halster. It's all happening within seconds. You're looking at these um, drawings on the wall. And you see the sketches start to flutter ever so gently in an unfelt wind. There is no wind whipping through, though that north wall has been completely erased and the ceiling is barely holding up, sagging on the few remaining pillars. There's no wind. There's no atmosphere. You see the drawings begin to curl up. In a surprise round, what would you like to do, Aldo, if anything? Aldo, I think just out of surprise and desperation, is just going to take a slash at them with the sickle. The, the yeah. pictures. All right. Uh, AC5 to hit. Okay. Uh, Natty 15, yeah. 15. You slice at the pictures and you hit it and the, like three or four of them just rip in half and fall off the wall. And you watch and it feels like the pictures that were on either the left and right side seem to close the gap. But maybe that's just your eye. There's no way those pictures are moving. But are they? Did they just get larger or did the wall get smaller? You can't tell. Halster. What do you do? Halster uh, can't believe his eyes and realizes that in order to find the strength necessary, he needs to reach outside himself to a higher power. And if he can use a standard action, will cast Bless upon himself and the rest of the party. Nice. May Phrasma Spiral protect us all. May we not make the journey to the afterlife yet. Bless. So what does that give everybody? A plus one to attack and damage? Correct. Does bless scale as you level up? Um, no, no. Every, no. nope, it does it's not. still a great nope. early level um, sort of divine spell to have. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just a hit, not damage, right? No, it's both. It's both. Yeah, we, damage, not just any damage. We talked about that last night. Um, yeah, I didn't think it was. It's, it's, it's not showing up in my sheet. Oh, no, 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 it's, it's not. I don't know oh, why. Oh, I'm looking at Mythic. I looked at Mythic. Let's mythic. See, I knew yeah, it yeah, didn't. Yeah. I knew Dark it didn't. I knew it wasn't damage. against fear effects. Well, are our faces red? Okay. <laughs> Mine is. Well, it didn't get added to my uh, numbers, so I, I didn't ever take advantage of it anyway. Outside yeah, of the he, he slept through the whole blast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> First uh, thing that will frustrate you this evening... Everyone roll a will save. Oh, no. <sighs> is, this, right. is this a fear effect? Yeah, good question. Yes. Okay. Uh, Sir, ah. Sir Julie is immune to fear. Yes. Yeah. I, I, yeah, it's a, I would say it's a fear effect. I am going to enact an ability. Eldritch knowledge. Because of what you just saw, Atticus has been through some shit. And he is able to st- to attempt to steal his mind against this sort of supernatural invasion with his intelligence as opposed to his will. Interesting word you chose. Steal his mind. Exactly. Ah. Uh, a double entendre. The second double entendre of the marathon. Entendre. This one in American English. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the president's English. <laughs> I'm going to use my intelligence modifier instead of my will, a wisdom modifier for my will save. Um, it comes with its own penalty. Uh, here we go. <laughs> uh, what'd you get there, Joe? <laughs> It looks like a dead mannequin. <laughs> I'm dead inside. <laughs> what? Uh, what is the total of your will save? The total of my will save. Hold on. Bless matters too. Does it? Yeah. Yeah. Against cool. fear. Oh, great. Yep. Is nine. <laughs> 
totally worth it. Totally worth the suspense. Uh, Aldo, what did you roll for a will save? Well, I have some bonuses too. I have the bless. Bless. And I also have the enduring stoicism trait, which is <laughs> sort of reflects his this style of madness. He doesn't experience fear the same way a normal person would because oh, that's of his cool. mental break. So that's a di- that's plus one for the bless and additional plus two for the enduring stoicism. And guess what? I rolled a natural six. Oh no! <laughs> By the way, for those who are wondering what I'm rolling a natural six on, that's a Norse Foundry die. You can find them in our stores. We'll be doing giveaways. Norse Foundry. Norse Foundry for all your random num gener- generating needs. I just hope you don't need them to be too high and inconsistent. I, uh, <laughs> all right. They sent me this well, T-shirt. Is, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I got a T-shirt too. Thank you very much, Norse Foundry. Yeah, I got this one that. too here. I, I, I yeah, it's like. gorgeous. I got yeah. that one myself. I really like the back. back yesterday. That's cool. Gradient, uh, beautiful, very comfortable tees. Little gradient logo action. That's two juicy yeah. fails. Uh, what about yeah. you, Halster? Uh, it's going to be close. I think I'm going to fail, though. It is a total of a fourteen. That is actually. A pass. Ah, the bless. The bless. I would have been in thirteen. Now here's the thing. Also this is where it gets. Oh, it was. Okay. It gets. It shouldn't get guessing. complicated, but it's just how we just all have to be on the same page with this. As long as we can all get on the same page with this, it won't be as as complicated as it as it needs to be. Skid and Joe, Aldo and uh, Atticus, are now fascinated by the swirling shapes on oh, the man. pictures. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to read Fascinated from the book because it is a, uh, it's a been a point of contention before. A fascinated creature is, in, a creature is entranced by a supernatural or spell effect. The creature stands or sits quietly, taking no other action than to pay attention to the fascinating effect for as long as the effect lasts. Minus four penalty on skill checks made as reactions, perception checks. Any Now, here's where it gets... Interesting. Any potential threat, such as a hostile creature approaching, allows the fascinated creature a new saving throw against the fascinating effect. We'll save. That's the important line. Any obvious threat, such as someone drawing a weapon, casting a spell, or aiming a ranged weapon at the fascinated creature, automatically breaks the effect. A fascinated creature's ally may shake it free of the spell as a standard action. We understand that last line. We understand that if a creature comes to attack you, you're broken out of it automatically. It's the potential threat line. I intuit this, that if this thing is just attacking Mrs. O'Lady, excuse me, uh, Sir Julie and Halster, and nothing, and, and not uh, attacking you guys, and you don't get that. And it never moves towards us. And it never moves towards you, you don't get that new save. Are you guys comfortable with that ruling? Sure. Yeah. Okay. If it comes at you, you get automatic. If, if any of them move in the room i would say if any toward of them, us we get another save right even if they're coming towards mrs o'lady you don't know that i'm not yeah, coming, coming in our direction coming, direction. coming yeah, in no. your direction yeah okay that's fair that's fair mrs o'lady is dead i know she's you she's dead her. to us all <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if you remember it happened so long ago uh well this is going to be interesting to see how this plays out the surprise round is over it is now round one and it is Aldo's turn. These Onerogens have the same situation. They're surrounded, uh, ten feet radi- ten foot radius by this obscuring fog, which is different from obscuring mist. Someone like Aldo, who relies on ranged attacks, can't target that square. Can't see it. What are you thinking, Aldo? Here. Oh, you're fascinated. Good fascinated. talk. Atticus. Not thinking anything. Atticus. Thinking, wow! Look at those pictures. <laughs> They're uh, fascinating. Uh, Atticus, you would be up next. You have the same problem. Halster, your last uh, turn against these dudes did not go well. Uh, you're up. He, uh, Halster, just gets snaps himself away from the drawings on the wall in great fear at seeing three of these things, or at least enough smoke to indicate that there's more than one, and uh, looks back at Aldo and Atticus. Does he notice that they seem to be stuck on the wall fixated there? Yeah, they're just like, they're gone. In that moment, fear overwhelms him. He knows he can't just do it, even with Julie's help, Sir Julie's help. Um, So he spends a move action to sheathe his sword 
and then he reaches out to unarmed strike smack Aldo Casimir. Ooh. Threatening Ooh. him, hopefully undoing this. I'm hoping right. that it'll be ruled no, no, that no. way. You, you, I think you can just r- rustle him away. Oh, okay. Then yeah, I'll just rustle him. You don't have to punch it's him in the face. Why did you hit it's me? You don't even have to sheathe your sword. Yeah, yeah. You don't even have to sheathe your sword. Action. You can just you know. spend the standard action like you said to rouse them. All right, I will spend the yeah, standard action I love action it. I love it. Them. He slowly sheathes his sword, <laughs> sets his feet, really plants that back foot, and then... <laughs> the back of his metal gauntlet just as hard as it can, smacked across the face. Non-lethal, but maybe, maybe some free plastic surgery in there, too. Uh, do you want to roll any type of checks? Uh, I'll do, I mean, applicable uh, knowledges to the wall that would help. Knowledge religion. Okay, I will roll that. Um, we'll put that on the grant I theft Oh, system. yeah, maybe it's a haunt. Yeah, oh, Jesus, it's a haunt. out of the yeah. box. You saw it. You saw it first. Uh, I don't know. Eight. <laughs> That happens for the. You finally got to see it, everybody. That's what it looks like all yeah. the time. <laughs> we see that all the time. Uh, so yeah, eight on the religion check. I do not know anything. Eight. Probably. Yeah, unfortunately, you do not. Um, all right, it is the Onerogen's turn. <laughs> All three of them stand there and do nothing. Just stand there, mouths open, vomiting yellow fog. Did my waking up Aldo move him in the initiative order at all? No, unfortunately it was his turn, so he lost the turn, yeah. Um, It is now Sir Julie's turn. Do I have to roll a save or of any kind? You certainly do. I want I want to call it the most important save of the night so far for you. Right. This is Sir Julie though. She could she can crush these saves. She's a save crusher. Alright. Will save? Uh yeah. If you fall asleep here, it's, it's, over. it's very bad. <laughs> Might as well just wrap it up. <laughs> Might as well just call hey, it. Dinner at six thirty. That's true. Yeah, that would be amazing. How does a 21 work for you? Oh, oh so yeah. cool. Oh, you were able to thank God. withstand it. Withstand it. I have a feeling I'm going to have to roll separate saves for each of these guys, though. So we're not out of the woods yet. Um, no, but we have a plan. Okay. Sir Julie will uh, wind up, power attack, take a swing at this Onirogen. Let's see what you got. Uh, tweener, uh, 18 to hit. Ooh. It's a hit, roll a 20% mischance. 21 or higher hits. 37. You're all right. Nice. Beautiful. All right. Dude, what if somebody rolls an 86 in this room? Oh, or, oh my. Or for the rest of the night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is 16 points of damage. Ooh, all right. So you Ooh. lay into this first that one. That is great. That is great. Awesome. Uh, do uh, significant damage to it, and it just still just stands there doing nothing. So weird and creepy. Defend yourself. Can I see the? <laughs> where did you get that? <laughs> Can I see the walls from where I am in the cloud? Uh, which walls? The ones that fascinated Aldo and Alster. Oh, yeah. Atticus. Okay, great. Uh, so, Sir Julie steals herself against the Onirogen's sleep effect, takes a mighty cut with the greatsword, then glances back behind her to see where her allies are and notices the, one of them staring at the wall. So, we would love to roll a knowledge of religion. Yeah. Do it. Uh, 22. Okay. Beautiful. This is a haunt. Yep. And that's why we had to do the perception check. <laughs> Yep, the old notice check, which allows you to uh, act in the surprise the round. Uh, to, to see the, the effect. See that little effect. This is what you know about haunts. They have usually something that, you know, if if, uh, if Halster had applied positive energy to it, you would have been able to possibly wipe it out in the uh, surprise round. Um, 
it usually has something else that can kill it. You don't know what that is, uh, like end the haunt. Um, it may be persistent, though, in which case, if it's a proximity haunt or something, as long as people are close to it, they might continually be uh, fascinated by this. So even though Halster woke up Aldo, he might have to roll at the beginning of his next turn. He does. Um, to uh, remain fascinated. So... It's a bad it's bad situation. It kind of forces you to have to get deeper into the room in the event that it's a proximity haunt. Uh, out uh, of an abundance of caution, Sir Julie will say, keep away from the walls. Get away from the walls. Um, and then relays all the other. No, it's fascinating. It's beautiful. <laughs> Gotta say this. This painting is so good that I would turn my back on the most deadly room I've ever stepped in in my life. <laughs> Uh, and that is Sir Julie's turn. That is Sir Julie's turn. Uh, uh, I'm just reading uh, some haunt stuff. Once per round. Haunt. What you doing? Oh, just okay. haunt things. All right, so yeah, this is what I wanted to see. So it's it's the haunt's turn, um, and so what happens is instead of you rolling on your turn, anyone within that range has to roll uh, again. I don't think you're immune to it just because you saved on it. So let me just make sure. Uh, yeah, that's what you said last night. When did I say that last night? You said that if you saved... Wait, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you meant on the sleep effect. Yeah, no. All right, so uh, Aldo and... Let me check where Halster is. Aldo and Hal, Aldo and Halster roll another will save to see if you're going to be fascinated. Sir Julie, you are immune because all haunts manifest as fear effects. Oh, natty 17, 21. Nin- Huge. 19. All right, so you are not... You've got a round to not be fascinated to do what you want. Atticus remains fascinated until something changes. Round two... Whew. I like when I feel like I'm doing things around 90% of the real, real way. Uh, it is Aldo's turn. Aldo, you have a chance to act now. Okay, so Aldo, still a little... Still not, not a lot he can do. He's going to move over into the corner of the room away from the wall, uh, but outside the mist. And he's going to shout out, it's, uh, Sir Julie, get a bit of light on your on your weapon or something, and shout out if if I can I can see the light, and then you can point out the enemies. I'll be have, I'll have something to toss at, and he is going to do a drink an extract. Pops off his bombardier, plucks a hair off of his off of his head, drinks it, casting effectively casting shield on himself. Ooh, good one. I like the uh, the hair. That was a nice little touch. Yeah. Ding. That spell is so good. Well, yeah. Uh, Atticus remains fascinated. Halster Price. Uh, Halster does not, if he was informed that it was a haunt by Sir Julie, does not want to waste his precious healing spells on it uh, because of how much in danger the rest of the party has been. So he will uh, take a five foot step adjacent to Sir Julie, will reach out and touch her sword with his standard action to cast light upon it. Ooh, nice. Go ahead and toss that uh, aura around you, Sir Julie. You know, it's an interesting off. thing. Having fought the one of these last night, you know that they're not super lethal when they do attack. It's the, like, if you can't time it up to wake one of you up while you're near it, uh, yeah. it could be really bad news. Um, and then I'll take a full move action just outside of the fog. I think you took a five-foot step already, didn't you? But there was no need to take that five-foot step. Yeah. You were okay. adjacent I, to I'll her I'll just anyway. cast it on her, and then I'll just move a little bit outside of the fog. Uh, okay. my, and away, my from, away from the wall, really. Your light is very blue, yes. I um, to distinguish between that and the yellow mist. I can make it a different color. I don't see Halster's light anymore, though. Oh, because you, you can only have one out. Oh, it's 10 minutes. No, it's 10 minutes. Oh, you can only have one up, right? Yeah, okay. All right, so interesting blue light you have there. Um, that, you, that see, you see semen all over the walls. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh. I'm no longer fascinated. <laughs> It is the Onergen's turn, and now, Sir Julie... I find these paintings disgusting. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the panties are covered. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Somebody found them a little too fascinating. All that yellow, all that yellow, that's not missed. I was just being. Oh, oh God. Oh, oh no. boy. All right. Oh, boy. Guys, come on. It's Sunday afternoon. It really <laughs> people is. People just came from church. Uh, <laughs> a lot of church goers. Perhaps, Sir Julie, because you attacked this thing, uh, you don't know, but now it's awake and it's mad. I Goes bet. to slam you. Natty 19 hits you. Well, I gotta see. 20% mischance. Uh, ooh, I rolled a 1. So with blind fight, I'll get a second chance. Uh, and a 12 on the second chance. Yeah. So it just straight oh, nice. up misses Scrap you. Scrap that natty 19. <laughs> nice. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's all that happens for the moment. And now it is Sir Julie's turn. Sir Julie will say, Aldo, Aldo, can you see? Hold on, what is her voice? Aldo, can you see my light? And then she will take a, she'll take a swipe. Uh, power attack. Yes, and you know because you sa- succeeded on the save for this one, you're immune to this one's sleep effect. Uh, that is uh, 25 to hit. 25 is a hit. Roll the Jimmy John. 12 points of damage. Did you pass the uh, concealment? Oh, concealment, concealment, concealment. 31. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Razor's edge. The good news is one less onerogen to worry about. Ooh. Nice that work, one Sir Julie. Perishes as it falls to the ground, not unlike the one you fought in the tower. The mists outside, you can see them beyond the two in the back, are starting to recede. Perhaps um, this is nice. the key. Nice. Uh, Sir Julie will say, that one's no more. And then she will move. Uh, and she will move up to follow my light and she'll move up to face the northeastern nice. one as you move up into that square I need you to roll a will save but you do uh, natty 19 natty yeah 19. baby so cocky uh, alright mm. excellent it is the uh, haunts turn <laughs> And I believe only Atticus is standing. Yep. Uh, none of, uh, neither Halster or Aldo need to roll a new save based on where they're standing. So you know that it's something proximity based and where you're standing at least is out of that zone of effect. Cool. However, your uh, pal Atticus, who has ranged spells, uh, is just still enraptured in there. You want to go in and save him, but then you run the risk of being fascinated yourself. New round. Aldo. All right. Yeah, again. Well. Hmm. All right, so I almost don't want to do this. I don't think it's... I, I, I can throw a bomb mm-hmm. aiming at where Sir Julie told me to throw, but I don't think it's worth doing just for the damage it'll automatically do to her and could really do a lot of damage because I could miss the square completely and hit her directly. So I think uh, Aldo's just going to hold. Okay. You know, you, an opportunity may arise uh, seconds later uh, for you to strike. But uh, he is uh, putting caution first, which, as you are on this second floor now, is probably the right call. Atticus, meanwhile, remains just lost in these pictures, memories being dredged up of what happened to him in the past, perhaps what led him to this very asylum. It is Halster's turn. Halster will spend a standard action casting divine favor upon himself. Uh, Actually, no, he won't because he... No, he wants to save his final casting of that for another battle. So... Um, Halster doesn't want to pass out in case someone gets in trouble, so let me just see. (laughs) Halster will move into position next to Sir Julie Andrews in order to help uh, next round. He can only move 20 (laughs) feet uh, in order to attack the uh, creature, uh, but can't quite make it there this round. I mean, you definitely can. You just have to roll that save. No, because I have. I was started you, here. 
five, ten, fifteen. And oh. then the diagonal. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's get up the grand grand tie theft system. This is new, the will save here. New die because that die was failing me. Fourteen on the die, a uh, total nice. of a twenty-one. You are immune to its sleep ability. Okay. Uh, now we'll d- 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 swing out an attack then. Awesome. You did that instead of divine favor, right? Correct. Awesome. Uh, yeah, good. Roll the hit. Uh, seven. It's, it's a total of a fifteen. Fifteen would be a hit. You got to roll that twenty percent oh. miss chance, Sony. Okay. Twenty-one or higher does it. Eighty-six. We should talk. Here, where's my other D10? What a terrible. Love time. the grand tie theft system. <laughs> just <laughs> really is awesome. Simply. All love right. It. So I'm just gonna roll a D10 <laughs> twice. Uh, so this is for the tens digit. Oh, a ten. Oh, <gasps> that's a fail. Oh, no, that's a miss. miss. Mm. Oh my god. Oh, that's oh, a Swiss man. miss. <laughs> what a bummer. Uh, uh, Meanwhile, it is the Onerogen's turn, and now that both of you have struck out at it, it takes an attack against you. First one is going after Sir Julian Rus. Uh, 15, big ol' miss. Second one coming at uh, Mr. Uh, 30 AC over here, Halster Price. Uh, that's going to be a 19 to hit. Miss Kling. Nice. <sighs> That shield, man. Huge. Poop salad. Um, all right, that's uh, that one's turn. The other one does not move. It is Sir Julie's turn. Sir Julie, you are immune to its uh, what's known as the Veil of Mists ability. Uh, all right. Seeing that Halster has stepped up and not fallen asleep, Sir Julie is going to slide to her left to go after the third nice. Onirogen. Nice. Ooh, slide to the left. Follow my slide knight. Slide to the oh, right. You know what? That's not a 10. That's a 70, I think. Well, it's too late now. Uh, Damn we'll... it, Grant. You ruined Matthew's moment. I know. I'm so sorry. We'll save. Uh, we'll save, yes. Natural 20. I'm on. Oh, oh man. Oh, man. Oh. And a natty one on the roll to attack? Let's see what happens. Power attack. Come on, baby. Uh, natty 8. So that is a 15 to hit. That's enough. They're not okay. wearing yeah. they're not wearing any armor. Uh, roll a 20% mischance. 50. 50, he says, with a flourish. Roll damage. Okay, not a lot of damage. 10 points of damage. Uh, a lot of damage. I think we can all agree it's more damage than Atticus has done this encounter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh... Let's keep moving here. Uh, top of the next round, it's Aldo's turn. <sighs> yeah, I, th- I had a pl- I had a plan, Skid, but then Grant stepped in, so uh, he ruined it for you. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, I can I mean, if it was, if these guys weren't able to handle these on their own, I, I could I could toss a bomb at Julie Andrews one, but I think I I would do more harm than good. So I'm still just going to hold. I get that. It's uh, it's definitely the safe option right now. You want to s- save save your uh, ammunition as whatever's well. Whatever's coming next, I want to be ready for whatever's coming. Throw a bomb at Atticus. Wake him up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, we're, 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 oh, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's still fascinated. So Aldo. <laughs> Joe's like, there. wait, what? <laughs> Uh, I'd prefer to take this encounter off, Skid. I think. <laughs> is this corner around the corner from being able to see it or do you maybe it's a proximity thing and not a visual thing but that might be a good place it's like a broken pillar oh well these are the broken it's like a broken wall chunk but yeah I oh. mean you could, you could give them splash damage um, oh no I see no go, go ahead well what I'm gonna do I'm gonna throw my dagger at Atticus okay why up Poof. ranged attack <laughs> What about this rubble all over your feet? <laughs> <laughs> That's not threatening, necessarily. <laughs> Maybe he can so leave the dagger sheath. We gotta take <laughs> Skid to a good stoning Monty Python style sometime. You're gonna crit. <laughs> there any women That's here us. today? <laughs> Are there any women here? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, 16 to hit. Uh, well, I'm gonna say it's a hit, because that I'm assuming I'm flat-footed to the attack, right? Well, put the fascinated condition on. It should uh, adjust your oh. AC accordingly. 
Uh, with old Hero Lab. Yeah. There, Don't leave right. home without it. Oh, no. It does not change my AC, so it harmlessly ah. deflects off my uh, mage armor. But it is a direct so, threat with a weapon. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's an, an obvious, obvious threat, face. you might say. <laughs> an obvious threat, right, Joe? <laughs> yeah, hostile threat. Obvious. He's They're in clear and present danger. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I just tried to kill you. The guy that wrote The Fascinated Condition is watching tonight, and he's like, this is why I didn't want to include it. This is why I didn't want to include it. <laughs> Too, it's too it good. has no business being anywhere near a combat encounter. <laughs> I know <laughs> the entire purpose of the ability is for social situations. Yeah, I know. But then you have something like this where it's a haunt whose only ability is to fascinate. Yeah, yeah. yeah it is so a haunt. So that's, yeah. that's cool. But like, so. it'd be much cooler if they used it so that they could get pull something off and you just can't stop it rather than like yeah. attacking you. Well, it's also it's it's changing the way I'm playing. I'm not having them move. You know what I mean? Or at least I haven't thus far to keep you in that uh, thing. So the, while while you're sacrificing yourself, it's helping your party uh, yeah. not get ganged up on. Um, uh, and so I snap out of it. Get a new save, right? Or yeah, uh, well, no, it's a new save if say they move at you. But if you are attacked, it is a uh, you just snap out of it. Any right? potential threat to any obvious threat, such as someone drawing a weapon, casting a spell, or aiming a ranged weapon, it says someone automatically breaks the effect. Yeah, so you oh, are uh, the Whoa. effect is broken. Beautiful. All right, and then it's my turn, and I just have to roll again. Uh, actually. Uh, it is yes it is your turn yeah. if the haunt got another turn you'd have to roll oh. again so you want to so get gets distracted <laughs> looks at Aldo thinks like what the fuck was that <laughs> I'm going to oh <laughs> no, don't look at the pain Natty 18 doing. 21 <sighs> not nice. fascinated Ooh. no you don't have to roll that it's not it's turn to fascinate Oh, I thought just because I was starting my turn in its presence. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's, okay. it, 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 uh, it acts on initiative 10. All haunts act on initiative 10. Uh, in that case, I'm going to snap out of it, and I will just... Uh, 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 I'm just going to move to the middle of the uh, cloud okay. to try to see where my allies are, and uh, and I find myself. I see the back of Sir Julie. Okay. Hello. Uh, all right. Atticus has joined the fight. She creepily <laughs> says, turns around, hello. Uh, Halster, you're right up in the business of one of these things. You withstood its veil of miscibility. What do you want to do? There's only one option, and that is to chop, chop, chop. Here it comes. Chip, 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 chip. 18 on the die. That is a hit. Nice. Uh, oh, concealment first. Uh, yep. concealment. Okay, so the A6. red A6. die will be my 10. The black die will be my single digits. A 77. <laughs> nice. Ooh. That's a crit in Cthulhu. <laughs> uh, and minimum yeah. damage, six points of damage. Minimum damage, six points of damage. First time this one has been hit, uh, but Halster did strike. It is now their turn. Two attacks on Halster, two attacks on Sir Julie. Uh, first attack on Halster, natural one. <gasps> oh, 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 just terrified by go. the ferocious oh, 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 presence oh, oh. of Halster Price. Now yes. we're having lots of fun with Natty each other. one with a natural attack. Uh, uh, na- <laughs> well, yeah, I was going to say I'll, I'll take the rest of my attacks while you're looking that up, but this, it could very well affect the rest of the combat. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see. This one from Sean in Cincinnati. Sean. Cincinnati, Cincinnati kid. The Cincinnati, Cincinnati kid. Home of the Cincinnati kid. <laughs> the sleeping horror stirs. Ha! <laughs> Oddly appropriate. An eldritch horror is fitful in its slumber, and you suddenly become psychically aware of the outer god's presence, leading you to a temporary state of mania. You are Whoa. you are confused for one d four rounds, and are vulnerable to psychic damage for one d two days. Will save halves the duration and negates psychic vulnerability. Uh, wow. So yeah, you're confused. Wow. All right, oh, so, so it's he, a, this thing could hurt itself. All right, it's yeah. a very low chance of a will save against Halster's AC, uh, and I miss with a sixteen on the will save. Oh, great. Okay, uh, so it's one d four rounds. It's confused for. 
one Th- D four rounds. Three rounds. Amazing. Three rounds. So Amazing. Awesome. does it need to roll now if it has two yeah, attacks? Yeah, so it's second attack. I'll have to roll a D100 oh, wow. to see what happens That's first. Great. Lay on the table. Uh, if this poor thing is, this if it wasn't controlled, uh, confused enough, I rolled a nine, which is act normally. So it will attempt to slam, but it's still confused for three more rounds, and it misses with the second slam. Nice. Meanwhile, the one in the back... And then I believe that as soon as it gets attacked, it breaks the confusion. Or it will attack its attacker. I'm pretty sure that's in confusion. But I'll read it while you move on. Uh, Okay. Just Uh, FYI, Sir Jules. If a confused creature is attacked, it attacks the creature that last attacked it until that creature is dead or out of sight. Uh, Meanwhile, the other one is going to take two against Sir Julie. First attack is a big old natty two. Second attack is a natty 19 for a 24. Yep. Here's some concealment. An eight on the concealment. (laughs) Wow. Reroll with the blind fight. I mean, Garbage. All right, a 65. Uh, not a lot of damage. It's going to be four points of damage. So whatever strategy you have here uh, thus far is working. Moving right along, it is Sir Julie's turn. Okay. Power attack. Uh, swing with the greatsword. Uh, that is a 23 to hit and a That's... 49 on the concealment. Ooh, baby. Nice, this will nice, do. nice. Finish it. Finish it. Minute. Minimum damage, nine points of damage. Oh, <sighs> gross. Roots McGoots over here. Gross McGrosserson. Top of the next round, Aldo. Aldo, whatever you did there, throwing that knife at your buddy Atticus, it worked. He's up. All right. Aldo is going to double move to pick up his knife. Double moves to pick up his knife. Did he perhaps move in oh. a dangerous area? We'll find out. Atticus, you're up. Uh, I'm going to delay. Atticus delays. Halster, you're up. Uh, Halster will you're swing up. out again and will roll all of his dice at the same time. Here it comes. Here we go. 18 on the die. 77 again on concealment and oh. max damage all oh. on camera. Oh. You Let's see it. the luck in action. We're talking 11 points of damage. Whoa. 11 points of damage. He just lays into the thing and it's still like hovering back and forth. It is now their turn. They will attempt to do a little bit of damage here. They haven't been successful thus far, but chipping away could mean a lot towards the end. A 17 to hit and a 18 to hit. Two misses on Halster, and then against Sir Julie, a miss and a miss. Two misses from the other one. It is now Sir Julie's turn. Sir Julie, you've got a chance to take this one out. All right, here we go. Uh, that is a 16 to hit and a 71 on the concealment. Hit, hit. What's your minimum damage? Nine. It's dead. Yeah. I, I, what is going on here? What is this encounter? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand it. It makes me very unnerved. <laughs> Two onerogens down. However, now that Aldo has moved back close to that wall there, he needs to roll another will save against these Wait. fascinating... I'm gonna move. F- fascinating pictures. I'm just gonna move to flank with the other, with Alster on the other onerogen. Okay, and bit. you got there without provoking, right? I don't think oh, you could. I don't think uh, I could. Based yeah, on your so, movement. Okay. All right, so I, won't do, I won't do that. Okay, I mean, I, have, I can't hit the broad side of a barn, so... I mean, you can still move right next to it. Yeah, I'll do that. I can get there in 20. All right, and you're already immune to its veil of missability. Aldo will save on the paintings. That is a natty 18 for 22. Picks up his knife, spins it around his hand, and resheats it. Top of the next round, it is Aldo's turn. You got your knife. What do you want to do? All right. I was about to say, that wasn't a knife. (laughs) 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 <laughs> He's having a good time. Uh, but uh, it was, in fact. You know what? That joke is rooted. <laughs> that joke is rooted. So Eldo is going to... He's just going to step away and get close to Atticus, and that's it. Okay. Atticus, your turn. Yeah. Right? He turns to Aldo. What do we do? Um, they seem to have it in hand. Uh, Atticus is just going to do uh, Perception. 
Perception okay. on uh, for other dangers. He's looking around. He sees the cloud. He knows they're fighting in there. He's not going to get in there. Uh, natural two. Uh, got that out of the way. All right. Good. That'll Good. be my Good. round. Good. Good. Get that done with. And it is now Halster's turn. Halster, finish him off if you can. Halster will five foot step into flanking with Sir Julie. Okay. Nice. And then another multi die roll on the Granty Theft system. Dip, 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 dip. Yeah. Okay. Natural one. Oh. oh. No, but this is one. why we play. Switch die. Oh no! He why did you die switch with, die? He had a hot die. No, that was the same die that was hot earlier. But that's what random uh, chance means. Uh, wow! So yeah, no, I and you are a named character. I am. Doesn't matter for fumbles. Okay. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know what? My parents <laughs> took the effort to name me, so I appreciate Troy pointing that out. I was. It was unrelated. I just wanted to mention <laughs> yeah. that he does have a name. I have, he has a name, you know. <laughs> what do we got, Joe? We got uh, Chiz from Bellingham, Mass. Ah, oh, Bellingham. Bellingham. Ah. Uh, Bacana. The defender deflects your attack with such ease. You are certain there is no way you can defeat them. Your character gains the frightened condition for 1d3 rounds. That's perfect. Ooh. Fortitude oh, no. save. <laughs> For shaken. Uh, All right, so that's anti roll see. Mm hmm. Okay, here it comes. Oh, Jesus, out of the box. Oh, out of the box again. So nervous. Natty 19. <laughs> oh, All right. Okay. You're All right, just so shaken. shaken for 1d3 rounds. How many rounds? Uh, you're shaken for, doesn't matter, two rounds. Uh, it's going to take probably its final attacks and uh, natural 20 on the second attack. <sighs> Against whom? Against, uh, I didn't call it out. Yeah. So I'm going to roll a d6. Uh, one, two, three, Sir Julie. Four, five, six, Halster. One, two, three, Julie. Uh, to confirm the crit. Concealment. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, it is an unconfirmed crit, but I will roll concealment. A one again. Oh, so my gonna re- God. Reroll for blind fight and a 39. So it is just exploding dice. Just chipping away. Ooh, exploding. Uh, I got a four on a D4 and another four on a oh, D4. Oh, come on. Uh, so four, eight, ten. Uh, you don't get the bonus. So twelve points of damage. Oh my oh. god! Oh. I suppose exploding Jesus. dice does benefit lower sided die more uh, clearly yeah. than others. There's a higher yeah, percentage. Chance. That was like, better than confirming the crit. <laughs> that was probably yeah, better yeah. than confirming. Yeah. Yeah, it absolutely was. It would have been triple damage. So just boom! Uh, unnatural strength. This thing just lays down upon you. But it is your turn, Sir Julie, and you have been red hot this combat. Can you take it out? Let's see. Let's hope so. Sir Julie! Uh, Julie! 17 to hit. 17 is a hit. Roll. Concealment. 62. 62! And how much damage? 14 points of damage. Ooh! <laughs> yeah. Dead. Yeah! Cha 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 cha. And you are. Out of combat. The mists outside look to be more than halved at this point. You can actually see some of the, uh, the rock formations, benches outside, pathways on the ground surrounding the asylum. You almost think you can see water where you couldn't see water before. It's still pretty grim out there. There is still some yellow fog. Maybe not as many shapes, but the weather is also bad. So it's hard to really tell, but clearly destroying these now four Onerogens has severed something and started the healing process. Where you are standing, you see a hallway that stretches to the west. Oh. Okay. Uh, could we do a little wanding? Sure. There's no time. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, three points. Eight points. One more? Eight points. Wow. Great. I can heal, too. I can... Anyone else? I can heal, too, you know? <laughs> I could do stuff. 
I just wanted to say, save uh, yeah it, on hands and any spells and, and combat level yeah. stuff. Yeah, my lays on hands. Lays right. the new the new potato chip flavor from Lay's on hands. <laughs> on hands. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> so we have defeated these creatures. What next? I'm ready Whoa. to push through. I don't know yeah, about let's keep going. going. Let's keep going. Can we search He's their weakened. bodies real fast? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you search s- the room. Yeah, take 20 on the room if we have time. Hell yeah. All right, so... Sir Julie, you're really the only one that can get close to the wall. Um, so roll a perception check. Me? Yeah, without uh, incurring oh. the uh, effects right. of the haunt. So while everyone else is searching the rest, you roll a perception on that, and then the rest of you roll a perception for the room. Natural four. Twelve. Twelve. Uh, all right, um, so as you're looking over there, you don't really see anything that that jumps out at you. The rest I'm of gonna, you. I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to also detect magic on the room. Detect magic on the room. Um, you detect magic emanating from the pages, the drawings. Mm-hmm. Um, but nothing else. Well, actually, I mean, now that we're not threatened by enemies, it doesn't, it's not horrible if one of us gets fascinated. Like someone can right, as long as nothing else comes in here, um, it's not the worst thing. Right. Aldo, Addis, be ready to kind of shake me out of it if I'll get, you know, the old case of the old gilly ghoulies. <laughs> and he goes over. Atticus uh, pulls out a dagger, flips it, grabs it by the <laughs> point, and just goes, whenever you're ready. <laughs> uh, that is a 20 on the perception. 20 on perception, just for argument's sake, roll a will save. Uh, that is a 16. All right, so you're over there, and you're looking. You're withstanding the fascinating effect. You're kind of keeping your eyes up. And uh, you looked at many of the drawings uh, have text on the backside of them. So you start taking them down, and you realize there's some sort of order that these pages can go into. The, they were ripped out of a book, and the back side, the blank side, was used to draw the charcoal and chalk drawings. But it was some sort of book. If you had enough time, which you don't think you have now, you may be able to reorganize this, these pages into something useful. Yeah, okay, so I start, because it looks like there's a, there's a book here somewhere. There's a book in this. And he just gathers all the sheets together and tucks them into his own spell book, like in a in a packet at the end of the at the between the cover of his books of the spell book and tucks it away into his backpack. It says in the book take you have to take an hour to gather all those pages, but I think that's stupid. So I'm gonna say you just take ten minutes. An hour. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're, but really, should, they're, they're really sticky. They're really, they're really stuck, stuck on the wall. <laughs> say that the four of you can do it in less time, a quarter of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they write this stuff, and you're like, yeah, that, that just seems ridiculous. Uh, but sussing it together and putting it where it go, that could take hours, that's for sure. Yeah. What do you do? Mm. So these stairs on the southeast side of the room, they don't go anywhere? You right? look and like, you can see the landing uh, just beyond it, um, but it seems to just lead to nowhere. The ceiling up there uh, is gone. Okay. So, I saw we go down this hall. All right. Agreed. Let's go. Let's Sir Julie go. Begins walking down the hall. After you, Sir Julie. Lovely. Wonderful. Yes. Yep. Yes. Quiet. <laughs> um. All right. Sorry, I'm just itching uncontrollably from my liver damage. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds so strange to say. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm just itching controllably from my liver damage. <laughs> um. All right, you start uh, meandering down the hall. Obviously, Atticus, you can see further than the rest of them. Um, You see that this hallway uh, continues on and eventually opens up into a room. To the north, you see uh, a couple 
or you see one door uh, hanging on its hinges, just opening into a room that is completely collapsed and uh, not unlike the north wall and the room uh, that you were just in, completely exposed to the elements. Um, All right. Moving continue, forward. Continue forward. All right. Is the whole party kind of moving on with Sir Julia? Yeah. 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 Okay. I think in general, uh, like I said last step, when... Uh, the space allows in a hallway house to will walk alongside Sir Julie, and when it is too narrow, he will walk behind her. Okay. Very good. Um, um, just, I'm going to do a perception uh, for traps. Okay. In the hall, uh, 13. All right, you don't see any traps, but now the deeper you get into the hallway, uh, you see that there used to be... Uh, these were probably cells that have been uh, that were used for like solitary confinement or patients that needed to be uh, put in small quarters and locked away. Um, and the further you walk in, if you thought the last room looked shaky, you feel like this could collapse at any moment. The ground underneath your feet feels very wobbly. Also, just like the room you were in before, there were. Th- thousands of parchment scraps covering the walls but they're covered uh, almost as in a pitiful attempt to plaster the countless cracks from whatever shook the foundation of this building there's also candlelight the flickering of dozens of candles illuminating these parchments parchments that you see aren't just there to cover cracks but feature artwork. Artwork consisting mainly of innumerable, forlorn, surreal landscapes stretching into bleak infinities. And the multitude of these visions as you continue walking down this hallway and eventually opening up into this room, which is equally covered in these things, transforms this experience into a threshold of nightmares. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Towards the rear, as the hallway opens up, you see in the center of the room ahead of you, Atticus sees this before anyone, lies four stained mattresses and numerous pillows heaped together to perhaps make a makeshift pallet throne. (laughs) Sitting atop said makeshift throne is a gaunt man with a ponytail of long and exceptionally white hair. And he's sitting cross-legged atop these pillows like a Kalashite mystic. He wears multiple patients' gowns that have been shredded and stitched together to create a multi-layered robe. His, his arms and, and much of his chest are exposed, revealing lines of charcoal and yellow chalk that streak his flesh, the most prominent of which appears to be a yellow flame emblazoned on his forehead. From everything you've heard so far and gathered together and pieced from articles and journals you've found throughout the asylum, you believe this to be Oliver Sandalus. Oh my God. Let me can, see where can, you guys are on the map. Yeah, can we see it on the map? I'm... Yeah, so... I'm going to show you what you can see. Atticus is the only one that can see. Let me do a little, let me do a little shift Z. Whoa. Oh, prettier wow. than I expected. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Got white hair. Yeah. What? Atticus. Immediately stops everybody. Stop, stop, stop. There. Ahead, in the next room. It's him. Only perhaps 50, 60 feet away. 
And, and is he looking right at me? Or at us? His eyes appear to be closed. I'm sorry. Is he sitting? He's sitting on the throne, the sitting, makeshift throne, you. eyes closed? Eyes closed. He sits it's like facing he's us. meditating. Eyes closed. I don't know if he knows uh, we are here. What do we do? Let's kill him. <laughs> <laughs> he, m- he must be stopped in one fashion or another. Shall we? Any buffs anyone would like to do? <laughs> Any buffs anyone would like to do? Why, I, 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 um, I ought to get my poops. <laughs> poops, I ought to buff you into next Tuesday. Uh, has, it, uh, has it been yeah. three minutes since our last encounter? Yes. So once we start moving forward... Atticus he took an hour is, gathering those pages. No. <laughs> once we start moving forward, Atticus is going to cast Mirror Image, but not until Sir Julius is straight up walking down the hallway. Um, otherwise, so that's, that's going to be your, your last second. To, but it looks to open to the left and the right. Approach very slowly. And how, Keep your eyes peeled for other threats. Halster will reapply Bless at the last moment as well. So you see these people walking down the hallway and just, it's like, it's the magical equivalent of cocking a shotgun before going. Yeah. In. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm going to roll. Uh, Aldo, sorry, Aldo is going to uh, mix a couple more extracts. He's going to cast Shield again on himself. And he is going to cast com- Comprehend Languages on himself, just in case. Oh, I love it. Right. Okay. Uh, how many images do we see? Four images. Pretty darn good. Pretty stinky, sis. Four images for Atticus. And uh, nice. um, yes, that's that's what he's going to do for now. <laughs> and and you're going to cast bless. You said okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh watch this, God! Watch this just be a role play encounter. Uh, I know. <laughs> It's it's just genius, yeah. We're gonna like and be like, and that's about six minutes, and uh, you've used all your stuff. Are you here to save me? <laughs> no. All right. Okay. Uh, all right. So you all step up, and these will be your your just before moments. Um, as you get to right where you are on the map, his eyes go wide. <gasps> and his mouth falls open. At that moment, a voice like a tempest wind hissing over broken glass shears from his split, motionless lips as though something other than Zandalus himself speaks from inside his body. And you just hear, You're supposed to be dead. I already killed you. What I want to die. And at that moment, Xandalus is yanked up like a motionless puppet on invisible strings, and his mouth lets forth a scream. And he floats towards you. Roll for initiative. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Oh, man. Here oh, we go. Here we go. Oh, man. Well, <laughs> at least I can be confident in the fact that this guy only does physical attacks, so my mirror image will be very effective. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, we're baby. having fun now. It started yeah. in, uh, what, uh. October uh, twenty. 2018? No, 20, 2019? October of... October no, of 2018. 2018. 2018. We cracked open book one <laughs> in LA, and now we're going to finish it in our homes. Aldo Casimir. <laughs> well, I rolled a natural one. Oh, oh What kind no. of dice are you oh. using? Well, that would be uh, Norse Foundry. <laughs> For all your random number generating needs, normally between one and eight. <laughs> I'm, this is the worst because this is my one, yes, chance, one to chance to throw a bomb without hurting one of my friends while I'm doing it. So that's a seven. This is a seven. And you have improved initiative, right? 
I just do. to well, protect you against situations yeah. like this. Uh, exactly what I was trying to. I'm avoid. pretty sure we have a surprise round. <laughs> so I wouldn't yeah, worry too much like about it. it. Sounds like he has no idea we're here. No. Sir Julie? <laughs> it sounds like he has no idea we're here. <laughs> that wasn't even him really talking. Caught him uh, 18 for Sir Julie. 18 for Sir uh, Julie. Atticus Creole. 22 Ooh. this time. Now he's 16. Nice. Moving it up nice. inch by inch. Halster Prize. At 14. 14. What's your... 14. What's your initial bone? Uh, plus three. Plus, plus three. Plus, please, sir. May I have a three? When was the first time you heard this? You guys came up from the dungeon and you met uh, 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 an apostle that was like totally not there. And he said, praise, praise. Yeah. Uh, words fail. Zandalu sees. That happened, yeah. I think, in L.A. Was that in L.A.? Yeah, I think that was the first thing you heard when you started exploring the halls before you even talked to Crossbow Jackson. Praise, praise. Oh, oh yeah. Zandalu sees. Now, here stands Oliver Zandalus, evidently the man behind this asylum uprising. It's round one, and it's Atticus's turn. How many yeah. are you? I'll throw your mirror images up. Uh, I have four images in addition to real Atticus. Pew. 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 Four images in addition to the real one. What shall I do? Sugar mm. gum mm. mm. Okay. To start. Magic missile. <laughs> Wish I had it. Uh. Hmm. Okay. Man. You know what? I'm going to delay. I have no idea what this guy can do or is capable of. I'm going to delay. Oh, I'll do a knowledge check uh, to see. I mean, so this guy, uh, this voice, this disembodied voice said, I killed you. I'm assuming this is from the, you know, the tatter man from the nightmare uh, that started the whole thing. Um, but I want to see if, like, if I can determine anything with a knowledge planes check about possession or what abilities he might have or weaknesses. You know what I mean? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's tricky because what you have in front of you is this being. But uh, go ahead, and knowledge planes is definitely what you want to roll. Okay, giving it a shot. Uh, not too bad. Twenty three. Twenty three. Is there any way to know what this thing is capable of? All right. You feel like this Tatterman, perhaps, is anchored directly to Zandalus's consciousness. Mm. That he himself may be on another plane speaking through him. Mm -hmm. And may only be able to influence Zandalus's thoughts. So that's what that's what you got here. You don't okay. feel like he can actually hurt you with Zandalus okay. here. Okay. Uh, and he will say that to the group quickly, and uh, that'll actually be his action. Okay. I'm not going to move, and I'm All not right. going to cast anything. Just that's yet. just a knowledge check. You don't have to waste the action if you don't want to. Uh, okay. Well, just to test the waters, as this thing comes moving at him. He's going to reach past Sir Julie and fire a ray of frost at it. He has no idea what effect frost. it's going to have, but he'll just try it. Okay. Uh, so this is a ranged touch attack through some cover. Uh, ooh, Natty 19. That is a 23 ooh. against touch. Touch plus four. That is a hit. Uh, nice. And he does, man, six on the die, three points of damage. I have maxed all of my Ray of Frosts <laughs> over the last two days. So three, three points of cold damage. Does it seem to affect him? It seems to affect it. Just <laughs> the body whips back in pain. Okay. And uh, I am going to stay where I am. Okay. Um, chat, Actually, make sure. Actually, I will, I will move back. I'm going to move back. 
a little All bit. Right. Sorry, if I got out uh, of there too. If you're watching this on uh, Twitch, make sure uh, chat don't spoil anything. Not only for the people watching, but for my players who are probably reading the chat and uh, looking for good ideas. If if, if there are <laughs> any mods, for the record, <laughs> if there are any mods watching, boot them if they do that. Uh, Wait, so hang on. Just to recap, I was I was trying to look at my character sheet to see if there was mm-hmm. anything I could do. Uh, we th- this is. Xander Lewis himself is a conduit for the Tatterman who's probably on another plane, and then we think that we can't actually hit, affect the Tatterman, but we can hit Xander Lewis because goes Ray hit Xander. Hit, right. Hit and you have every re- reason to believe that, uh, you know, it's through this control, perhaps, that he was orchestrating this whole movement through, like, as Xander Lewis's mouthpiece. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Moving right along. Keep breathing, everybody. It's Sir Julie's turn. Sir okay. Julie Andrews, she's new to this party. Uh, Sir Julie is going to... Is he flying in the air, or is he kind of just above? No, he's just like... He looks like there's invisible strings holding him up. Okay. Uh, Sir Julie is wearing heavy armor, so she's going to have to double move to get up in melee with him. Uh, so one, two... Okay. She's gonna go around this and come up over here. Okay. And double uh, move. To all right. It hasn't acted yet, so uh, it, it would technically be flat-footed, um, and so it cannot take uh, an attack of opportunity. Sorry. Is there anything to the south or the north? Oh yeah. Now that Sir Julie's in there, uh, I can show you the rest of. I the feel room. so claustrophobic right now. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Oh no! That's, oh, Julie! Oh, oh no! no. A, sorry, I just I used the reveal tool on roll twenty, and it uh, hid the uh, room. It's so weird that it does that every single time I go to reveal the room. Uh, <clears throat> isn't that strange? And I know we've talked about this before. Is like everyone knows it's a fight, but you're still flat-footed until you act in the round. I always thought that was a little yeah. counter. Uh, it is a little. It's weird. one thing if it's like you caught him unawares, but I guess that's. You're having a conversation. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's like we know this. We're battling right now. Like, ah, yeah, yeah. What the hell is that? That knight just got behind me. Yeah, I just love the <laughs> image. Like, yeah, to me, it, it breaks the the immersion, like a video game, where he just like, Sir Julie just like runs by him, and he just watches her. <laughs> the only okay, thing, I, yeah. the only reason I can use to, uh, and probably why that is the rule, is like this is all happening in six seconds, and Sir Julie was faster, so she was able to get there before it was able to react. Yeah. I but I still don't like, like it. I was like, oh, we were we were having a perfectly pleasant conversation about how I killed them before, and then they jumped me out of nowhere. <laughs> I mean, for, for no good reason. <laughs> for no good reason. In my own house. Uh, Halster, you are up. So, after hearing Ugh. what Atticus shared with us regarding what is going on with this guy, and following up on a hunch I had ages ago, which I discussed in the show and not wanting to have the same effect where we had a scroll of paralysis removal that we never used Mm -hmm. Halster will reach into his sack and pull out the candle of spirit protection which I guess will be Ah. a standard action the candle of spirit protection pulling it out is a move action move action okay um so I can't so here's the here's the deal the area is protected against intrusion by astrally projected creatures, ethereal creatures, haunts, incorporeal creatures, medium channeling a spirit, and phantoms. I'm hoping this will interfere with this. Uh, if that is a move action, uh, then all I have left is a standard action. You uh, could light it. I, I can't. It. It, it will only work in a 10 foot radius from where I light it, so I need to get next to him first. Any attempt to move it once it's lit will uh, extinguish its properties according to the wonderful archives of Nethys. Um, uh, Halster will cast, in addition to this, just in case, uh, divine favor on himself, and with the fate's favored bonus, will receive a plus two to hit and damage, uh, and is ready to move in and light it next turn. Okay. Unless someone wants to grab it relay style, but that's the plan. Pulls it out as a move, divine favor is a standoni. And then religion checks, would that be any use here or no? No. Okay. Can I throw something into the mix? I don't know if this is going to be a thing, but I just want to let you know 
Uh, yep. and if you don't like it, you just throw it right back. Just toss it right back, sure. Uh, my Sir Julie's mercy is deceived. So if she ever, uh, if there's an ongoing illusion that I di- that I fail to disbelieve, I mm-hmm. get an automatic reroll. Thank you. Thank you for telling the class. Um, it is Alvers Andalus's turn. Sir Julie, you have a real good view of this as it's standing next to you and about to hurt you. Yes. It's already pretty scary what you just saw. But all of a sudden, its head goes down and a darkness envelops it. And it just looks at you with those dead, vacant eyes where you know somebody else is driving the car. <laughs> and then it just like ding, twists its head at you. We roll a concentration check, uh, or a cast offensively, rather. Natty 19. Made that. <laughs> roll a will save. Is this a fear effect? Uh, no. Mind affecting. Uh, 17. 17. You pass. All right, you're going to take half damage. Uh, From a mind thrust? From a mind thrust. With with a little extra flavor dropped in from Oliver's class. Uh, Oh, rocks! You're lucky you made that save. Oh my god. I I want to I rolled 3d6. I rolled 665. Oh. Uh so 12 uh, 17. So that's going to be 8 points of mental damage. Ooh. Okay. And then 1 point of bleed damage. Oh. Oh. So like scanner. Literally it just yeah, boom and you just you feel like a little cold spot leaking out of your right ear. His blood oh. begins to trickle down your face. Uh, and it will then uh, float five feet backward, just like it looks like it's floating, but it actually moves just five feet backward. Um, actually, diagonally up, avoid some friendly fire from your friends. Aldo Casimir. Oh, Ooh. well, I'm glad he did that. So, Aldo, seeing this move, this horrible thing. He is going to run up here, run up to get an angle onto him, and toss a bomb. Yeah. Uh, That is a 14 against touch. 14 against touch is a hit. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay, so that is... 16 points of fire damage. Oh, huge, huge. Okay. Uh, so Aldo lays into it with a bomb. It is now new round. Atticus's turn. This is so terrible. Uh, all right, Atticus is going to move up. Right, move up 20 feet. Uh, I've got so many crazy things on me. <laughs> what is going on with all these Atakai? I have never uh, played this class, by the way. Come on. It's a class? Yeah, he's got some 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 levels in a certain class. Huh. I think... Uh, well, actually, I know one of you has played. So is this uh, is this line of sight blocking right here? This, this wall? Is this uh, a wall that yeah, blocks... Yeah, it's a chunk of, of a wall. Um... So Atticus can't shoot at him, correct? You just got to move in a little bit more. I'm at my max my movement. Ah. Uh, all right, he's just going to... He'll ready in action. If this guy steps out uh, and is visible, he'll fire his crossbow at it. Okay. Very good. Uh, it is Sir Julie's turn. Sir Julie shakes off the, the, the mental pain. Uh, she will lay on hands. Okay. Get two points back, which isn't ideal. Uh, and then she will take a five foot step towards Zangelus and take a swing. Power attack is on. Natural one. Oh, oh Sir no. Julie! Oh, come on, dude. Oh, Sir now. Jules. 
Oh. Jules! God's sakes. Oh no. Oh no. That's Not in a boss fight. This, this isn't you, this isn't a video game. You can't just restart your earlier save. That's, is she a named character? <laughs> okay, this one from the young squire <laughs> Petty Pants. <laughs> from Asheville, North Carolina. Asheville, love that. You get a lot of support from Asheville. How you doing? We do. Yep. Love it's Asheville. A cool college town. Great town. Uh, the title is Bruh. <laughs> As you miss your Bruh. attack, you know. <laughs> I love his reactions to fumbles. It. It makes it worse. <laughs> As you miss your attack, you notice something about your target that hits you hard in the feels. You become dazed for 1d3 rounds. Oh, Jesus! Mm. The daze. Will negates. Oh. So at least you get a chance. Yeah. All right. If you are dazed for three rounds. 21 on the will save. It's against his AC. Uh, you are all right. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Oh. Thank God. Dazed. What is going on here? I don't understand this encounter. Oh, so bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, got all right, very, so no, very lucky there. No secondary well, effect, right? Yeah. You just you that was it. Save soccer. Will all negates. Right. All right, Sir Julie steps up and almost puts herself in bad position. Ha. Could you imagine if she was dazed for three rounds? How fucked we would <laughs> be. <laughs> well, I mean, can you imagine if Mrs. Elaney were here? She could do nothing. We'd be. I'm sure this thing is immune to mind affecting effects. It's, oh, lady wasn't making it out of this. Book. I don't know. I don't know that it is. I mean, it's a psychic. I, mean, I think it could be like the fight at the end of Dark City, if she was here. Anyway, yeah, psychic I, battle. I, I don't. Th I think this. I don't think she. The. I think the Zandalus's mind is not what we're fighting. So I think. Oh well, yeah, maybe. It is now Halster's turn. Halster, you got a candle in your hand. You brought a candle to a gunfight. I did. Uh... Halster steps up 20 feet. Uh, looking at the wall next to him, it's provided cover or whatever concealment for Atticus mm -hmm. to not be able to shoot from where he is, but does it have like cracks in it? I'm just trying to ascertain whether or not I can light the candle here and the smoke would emanate in a 10 foot radius or if the wall would stop it. No, I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay. Yeah, if you drop it in that square, just uh, I'll give you a little, I'll make a little candle for you here. Good old roll 20. I'm sure I can get something, and then you can put the aura on it you want. There you go. Excellent. Um, okay. Uh, so so I guess that would be a standard that. action probably to... Uh, actually, I can just... Hold on. Edit the token. Let me... Uh, can you put an aura on the candle since it won't be attached to me? Sure. Um, How many? 10 feet? 10 feet. Uh, I guess it would be a standard action to light it. Uh, so it doesn't say in the text, but that makes sense to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would say to, to light it and place it down is going to be your turn. Okay. Because you you moved as well, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's your turn. All right. So he lays down this candle of spirit protection uh, to perhaps try and ward all of you from uh, creatures from the spirit world. It is now Oliver Zandalus's turn. Zandalus is standing right there and again just does something looks exceedingly dark and cocks his head again uh, I'm gonna need a will save from Halster okay uh, total of a uh, 18 18 that's a pass nice Oh, wait. Eight. It would be a 17 if it's not fear. Is it 17 if it's not a fear effect? It's not fear effect, yeah. Okay, so 17. Uh, 17, you're still all right. Uh, four points of damage and one point of bleed. Oof. Ooh. And that'll tick, tick on, on my turn? Okay. Yeah, so Julie, you took a turn after you got hit, right? So take another point of damage for the bleed. Although, did you use magical lay on hands? I did take use. I used late on hand. Yeah. All right, so that would stop the blade. Yeah, that. smart, smart. Uh, all right, so it does that, and then it moves fully behind this wall now. Um, or he five moves foot, rather. Five foot step. Five foot step behind that little clutch wall. 
And it is Aldo's turn. Okay. Aldo. Oh, wow. This could actually work out again. So Aldo is going to step into this pile of rubble here and should have you have a corner of this guy. He's going to throw another bomb. Yep. This one, uh, Halster will have to try and avoid some friendly fire here. Wait, but there's a wall in between me and him. Yeah, you get a bonus to your reflex save. Okay. Uh, and I'm at the miss. That is a nine against touch AC. Oh, boy. So that is going to be the old D8. We haven't had this uh, one in a while, right? Yeah. No. Bad news. Okay, so that's six. One, so two, three, four, five, six is right on house. Right on the candle. Square. Oh. On the oh. candle? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, can- the candle's out, but more importantly, Halster takes <laughs> full damage. And then... Uh, oof. Halster takes Well, that doesn't hit. Points. That doesn't hit my touch AC either. Does that matter? It just changes where the square is that it hits? Yeah, it just it's lands splash, on square. It's splash damage, right? So it wouldn't, should, I, wouldn't I be yeah, affected I don't think like a, splash damage instead a direct of a direct hit? hit? Yeah, it's just splash it didn't damage. land on his square. It landed on the square next to him. No, no it, it landed, landed on, on Halster's square. square. But it... But it wouldn't have hit my touch AC. Isn't the DA just the, the surround the ring of squares surrounding? No, it's where the, the bomb lands. Uh, yeah, so it's it landed on House to Square one two three four five six. So when it lands on there, it oh, doesn't. Oh, my roll twenty didn't update. Sorry. That's yeah. Right. Oh. But yeah, it, it's it, interesting. Okay. I it doesn't make happens. sense because it wouldn't hit my touch AC. I feel like I should just get splash damage from it if it doesn't hit my touch. Interesting. The rule uh, kind of doesn't make sense on top of that, but. Regardless. Well, that Going aside, I'm just wondering if it hits you or if it doesn't. I mean, yeah, it wouldn't hit your touch. All it has to do is touch you, though. Like, I, it hit you by accident. Yeah. All right, so... so uh, but with a nine, when my touch is 11. No, 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 but I know. But, like, that's if I were aiming at you, I would have missed yeah. you. But I threw it at something else, and it accidentally hit you. Yeah. All right, splash damage. So, and then, uh, so, it's... But it's... it's, it's you can, I guess you can still roll the reflex save to avoid the splash damage. Okay. And then uh, Oliver will do the same, but Oliver gets the bonus now and not you. Okay. Oliver made it. He doesn't take any. Uh, I like that you're on a first name basis with him, Troy. Me and Oliver go way back to the beginning of book one. 12, which I imagine doesn't cut the mustard. No, that is a, or mustard. That is a fail. Uh, how much damage? So that's nine, nine points of damage. Nine points of damage. All right, not great. He haven't. He's uh, been sorry. Those have been landing true for a while. It's Atticus's turn. Atticus, you now see that he is ducked behind what remains yeah. of a little wall there. Probably this used to be uh, like all these rooms to the north were little cells. This was probably a room comprised of four or five cells, but most of the walls are broken down. Yeah, I just don't know. I can't see him. I there's. It's just, um, and I can't heal anybody. So, you know what? I'm gonna cast. I'm gonna cast d- detect magic on okay. the room, and a cone on the room, just to see if there's any other sources of magic in the room besides him, which I wouldn't really know in one round. Just ruling round. stuff out. The only magic you detect in the room uh, is emanating from the mace in his hand and the candle. On the floor in front of Halster. Uh, okay. Well, that, that's a standard action, so that's his round. I'm not okay. going to move. Um, let me just make sure. Uh, there's actually. Da, 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 there is the the. Uh, you don't even. You're not even supposed to give me any of those specifics. In in, in the first round, it's just the presence or absence of magic. Oh, yes, the there's room. magic. So I won't tell you anything else. Yeah. Thank you for uh, not letting me say too much. All right, detect magic. Yes, it is uh, now Sir Julie's turn. Okay, Sir Julie will uh, show five foot step up to up to Zandalus and take a swing. Take a swing at the loose. Uh, Natty 18 uh, nice. with power attack. That is a 25 to hit. That is a hit. There we go. Well struck, Sir Julie. 16 points of damage. 16 points of damage. Just <laughs> boom! <laughs> thrashes out. And uh, that, that hurt him. That definitely hurt him. The time uh, has come for you to release your hold on Xanderloos. 
It is now Halster's turn. So this wall, uh, can I strike through it? No. Okay. It's a confusing wall to me. Um, it's uh, a wall that you get a bonus to your reflex save if there's a uh, splash damage, but you cannot strike through it. It's like it's providing uh, cover. Okay. Uh, Alistair will... Uh, so he can't strike me through it either. So let me just see. Five. Uh, actually, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Uh, and will swift action... Uh, heal himself with fervor and empower that uh, very quickly with a blessing. Uh, let's see how much healing I'm going to get out of it. Uh, so that's six points of healing. Okay. Uh, very necessary at that point uh, after that bomb damage. And that will be Halster's turn. He'll hopefully be within position uh, to attack next round. Okay. Uh, it is now Oliver Zandalus's turn. Uh, Joe, you shook your head at my... Uh cover comment you know like that I mean yeah I, I just like does it is there line of sight through it yes okay and you can you know you can attack through cover just with the bonus to AC in melee but if you're if you're saying it's just you know while you can attack through I yeah, just yeah I'm just saying it's a wall you can't sight. attack you get the bonus to your reflex save but you can't attack through it's it fine well. too as a move action it makes sense too because Halster would need to draw out his sword anyway after having had ho- held the candle so he really shouldn't have been able to attack anyway so either way it's a move point okay Ka-ching! it's Oliver's turn Oliver will uh, take a five foot step back uh do we did we decide that uh, if you take a five five foot step you can draw something as you do yeah. so? Yeah. Yes. I, I, yes. Okay. So as he, long as you have a BAB of one, he pulls no. a. That's that doesn't matter in that case. You can take a five foot step and then a move equivalent action to draw anything. Okay. As long as you don't move again. Oh, I thought if you were gonna do something else. Yeah. Um. He does so and drinks a potion and goes invisible. Oh, okay. Uh, so Alver has disappeared, and it is Aldo's turn. Okay, well, Aldo is going to take another little five-foot step, get a little better look, and though he went invisible, he knows where he must be, or where he likely is. So he's going to throw at the square where he saw him drink the potion. Okay. Uh, that is a natty 13 so that's a 20 to hit. Okay, 50% miss chance. Okay. Come on, buddy. Miss. <gasps> 37. <sighs> so. Oh my god. Okay, so it hits the wall behind him. It's the wall, so yeah, like so up towards the splash. ceiling. It just yeah, it's still. Uh, so yeah, in three dimensions, it will splash. Uh, reflex save, natty 14. Um so that he makes it and doesn't take any splash. Uh, all right, you have an idea where he may be, but he is no longer where, uh, no longer visible. New round, hmm. Atticus. What do you think? Hold on uh, to detect magic for a yeah, second I'm gonna round. Yeah, I'm going to keep detecting magic, and now I get to know how the number of auras. Okay. Magic. You also know exactly where he is because he's carrying a magical item, as right. Corey told us a lot. Exactly. Right. So he's he's right there where you thought he was. Um, you know, still fifty percent mischance um, because he is invisible. Um, I know the number of different auras and the power of the mo- uh, of the most potent aura. So if there's something that really stands out, I, I would notice it in in comparison to the other auras. Six auras, and the most powerful aura is. Wow. Um, Oh, I, I'm sorry. The power is like the caster level, I think. Right. Six or yeah. is the most powerful of which is emanating. F- I get to tell you where it's no, emanating No, 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 no. Not location, just the power, like the caster level. Oh, of what it actually is? Okay. Third round is exactly where Let me is. tell you too, Troy, the candle of spirit protection is caster level 11th, if that changes the stuff. Oh, thank you. Thank you for telling me that. Uh, I can tell you... That's interesting. It's a super powerful thing. I was hoping that it would cut him off somehow. Yeah, okay. I don't know if it had any effect at all or, or not. Otherwise, um, I would have just attacked him. Sorry, I'm just trying to uh, suss this all out, and it doesn't quite give me the information. I guess the the candle spirit protection is level eleven. 
Master level 11th. It's from a Cult of Entries, page 256. Moderate necromancy. Price 1,500 gold piece arenos. <laughs> we should have sold that if money yeah. meant anything <laughs> in this horrible place. Um, interesting. Well, I think that might be the most powerful thing, which just seems crazy to me. It's a very um, powerful spell. Yeah. yeah what it does is incredible. Yeah, so 11. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. what you, yeah. that's what you feel. Yes. Eleven. Uh, I hate that though, because certainly not the most valuable thing. Do you want that's me to lie, say. or do you want me to no, tell no, no, the no. truth, it's, Troy? It's good, it's good. What do you want? I got this whole camera. God damn it! Do you want to move it all, Atticus? No. All right, Sir Julie. Uh, Sir Julie, uh, we'll take a five foot step here, uh, and so I don't have any cover, and we'll swing at the square she saw uh, Zandalus drink the potion from. Okay. Fifty percent miss chance. Fifty-one or higher hits. I'm. I'm. Gentleman. Yes. Fifty-one or higher. Gentleman's fifty-one. Okay. Uh, Ninety on the miss chance, and a nice twenty-two on the. Oh hit. yeah. That is a hit. Big hit, dude. Swing Huge. for the she fences. Her great sword connect. Ooh, I rolled a six and a five on two d six, so that is eighteen oh, points of damage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something. <laughs> Is about to happen. My detect magic finally worked! Yes! Atticus MVP. MVP. <laughs> MVP. Yeah, man, he has been hot tonight! <sighs> you feel the body that was there crumble to the ground. Oh! And from that spot that is still uh, invisible, clouds of thick yellow smoke begin just pouring out into the space. Oh, and we'll no. see you after this quick intermission. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, this oh. quick word from our sponsors. Man, if that Android's intermission clip doesn't get you fired up for the return. So friggin' funny. <laughs> Still, it still holds up for us. We're sitting here watching it just die. I, I, I couldn't hear it. And at one point, I looked over at Troy. He's just cackling. I'm like, are you just sitting there laughing at your own jokes? <laughs> it hits so good. It hits so good. I was just remembering it. I was saying, like, this is. <laughs> It's so because Ellie made so many mistakes with her own character. <laughs> just <laughs> kept piling so up. <laughs> just kept adding up. <laughs> Finally, we just had to be like, all right, come on. Can we, can we get this out of the way? Yeah, we, you, you don't know your character. Know <laughs> uh, our own name. If, uh, <laughs> if you haven't followed along, both Glass Cannon and Androids will be back in November. <laughs> Woo! Yes. Joe was saying before we went live tonight, he's like, we need to just like pick three days and record a bunch of glass cannons in a row over three days just to like stay in the same mindset that we are like we are with Strange Aeons. It's not a terrible idea, Joe. I know. I'm in the zone right now. And like, and then Skid even said it. He was like, think about your prep as GM. Like you can just prep one game for just, for you know it's coming. Yeah. Uh, three weeks, four weeks out, we schedule it. And it's just like bang, bang, bang. And we just, and we're so in it. Because right now, we're very yeah. in it with Strange Aeons. Yeah. Uh, I think the, the only difficulty would be, like, it's a lot different prepping a book five and a book six, 11 hours, 12 hours of that, than it is book, uh, prepping a book one. But Yeah, but if you're doing, like, multiple sessions, you end up doing re-prepping stuff over and over right, again right. each time that you did, thought you may get to that you didn't get to. Right. You know? So at least you eliminate It's always that. those high-level casters, man. That's what really just like... Yeah. Give me a high-level high guy that all he does is like grind. He's got a couple feats that just make oh, his... smash. Yeah, his damage even more cool. That bleed, clean. Sign me up. But when you get into casters and stuff, like, oh, it's just... It's a pain in the butt when you're not used to playing these. Like, uh, I, I had to... For this last guy, I had each round written down of options of what I wanted to do for him because I wasn't familiar uh, with the class. Class, um, of one Oliver Zandalus. But uh, 
Yeah, before we jump back in, I uh, just want to thank everybody for uh, joining us all weekend long. We've had uh, an unbelievable turnout um, from day one all the way to, to this strange uh, afternoon time, which is very convenient for us, uh, less for other people, maybe. Uh, it's also Sunday, uh, but we appreciate it. We appreciate all the uh, the new subs, the upgraded subs, the an- people that jump to annual subs. Thank you. And uh, like I said, we're already starting to book tour dates uh, for all of 2021. So if this disease can get its shit together uh we're gonna we're gonna be back on the road playing live where anything could happen kind of like this but uh, you get to see it in person and uh we drink we drink a lot um we're still doing that giveaway i'd say we're probably going to go to about seven if you haven't taken a screenshot with yourself in there if you want you don't have to of us tagging us at the glass can on instagram do it now you got like 27 minutes before we're going to pick a winner of uh, another set of glass cannon gcp norse foundry dice um but honestly, I just want to jump back in because uh, I can smell the end here. And I'm really interested to see how this is going to all play out. You guys made uh, relatively short work of the uh, the man formerly known as Alvar Zandalus. He went invisible, took a gamble there to try and uh, move back and get some healing because you laid into him with bombs and with great swords and uh, with a couple clutch to tech magics with a scented um, yankee candle don't forget the scented, that the scented yankee candle and the tech magics were really took him out he uh falls and you can see did that did the candle do anything can you tell it us? doesn't appear to have any effect thus far but your your day is far from over so julie you feel a body fall next to you and yellow smoke tendrils of yellow smoke start rising up from the space where you know zandalus to have been and then slowly his body starts to appear and you just see from every orifice smoke shooting out in all directions so much so that it starts to cover your vision and black out from there That yellow fog gives way to uh, a late autumn sky. All colors of the rainbow, orange, purple. You see a chalk powder white waning moon mournfully sitting low above a swampy landscape. The noise of toads and cicadas dominate the scene as we see a falcon swoop through the air, riding on the turbulent winds. Our eyes follow its dusty silver wings as it ascends from the the crown of the cypress swamps to the apex of a soaring ebony obelisk dotted with saffron lights. Our view now takes us inside the obelisk where magical white candescence glows from a shield, lighting a winding staircase, where we see Halster Price climbing flight after flight until he finally reaches an iron-bound oak door. From a monk's pouch tied around the waist of his folds, Price uh, extracts an impossibly complex key and unlocks the door. Amber light beams through the open door frame, so bright that Halster has to squint. At the rear of this cavernous, oblique room, high atop a sulfurous throne, sits a man wearing a circlet on his head. The light effusing from behind the throne makes it impossible to fully regard his features, but does nothing at all to disfuse his voice booming from the willowy, serpentine silhouette. The time has come, my dearest supplicant. Your duties as lector have been executed admirably, but it is time for a reassignment. Halster struggles to hide his disappointment. Where would you have me serve, my prince? The pitch black backlit figure rises from his throne a halo of dandelion enshrining his head the time has come for you to leave us and serve another an allied house requires your assistance immediately on the morrow you are to report to count hasterton lowell's the fourth in versex county 
As you command, my prince. He turns to walk away, and from behind we see, beneath Halster's hair at the rear of his skull, a spiral scar, glowing briefly with gentle phosphorescence. And that spiral, that phrasma-like spiral of yellow continues to turn until we're back in this room where the body of Alver Zandalus now lies, yellow fog spewing from every hole, including the holes that Sir Julie made in him with her great sword. <sighs> Staying in initiative order here. What do you do? That was Sir Julie that landed the killing blow. Halster. Um, <clears throat> Halster will move in to flank Sir Julie, stand side by side to regard the fallen figure. Uh, can you do a perception check or a heal check to, to learn anything about him? Sure. Uh, so we'll go with heal. Uh, that's a nine. Uh, he's too nervous in the moment to do anything. Um, you know, he's dead. He doesn't resemble the uh, what happened to the Noenerogens. Remember, you looked at them and it looked like their organs had been eaten out from the inside. Mm -hmm. um, he seems to be dead, but there's something seeping out of him. Um, does Sir Julie appear hurt to him? Um, a little. A, a little. little. Uh, and with one use of fervor as a standard action, Halster will reach out to heal Sir Julie, will not use a blessing to empower it. Five points of healing. That's great. Thanks. Five points of healing onto Sir Julie. Moving right along, it is Aldo's turn. Aldo <clears throat> steps up to... Can he do a... a an arcana or... An alchemy check on the mist itself to see what, what it is? Uh, yeah, I would say planes would be best. If you don't have planes, do arcana. Mm, uh, 18. 18. Uh, it just resembles this fog that's been uh, surrounding the asylum, the fog that you've seen strange shapes in. So you just, you just knowing what you know so far, it's, it's almost like the dreamlands are entering the room. Um, all right, moving on to Atticus. I'm just going to keep detecting magic. Um, so that would be a third round, which means I know the, Location of all the items. Okay. Uh, the largest... And how many there are? All right, so the largest collection of those items are where uh, Zandalus was sitting in the direction of the, uh, the pile of uh, pillows and mattresses. Um, and then there's obviously uh, the mace that was in Zandalus's hand and the uh, candle that uh, Halster placed on the ground. And none are stronger than the other? No. I mean, the candle is the strongest. Uh, okay, uh, then Atticus is going to walk over to the pallet and mm -hmm. do a spellcraft check. Okay, you want to move the pallet around and uh, search because you, you're, the pallet itself isn't magical. There's some, yeah, 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 uh, think... wherever the items are. Okay, yeah. all right, so you start kicking. Well, I mean, the, actually, uh... I mean, it doesn't say you have, well, yeah, yeah, you have to have line of sight. So, yeah, I guess I have to see the actual item. Um, okay, so you start kicking uh, at the palace to see if uh, you can find the source of the uh, magical aura. And uh, you see several things trickle out. You see... Um, sorry, got a lot of shit here. My, I've got so many tabs open. You know when you have like a million tabs open? Oh, no. You try to scroll down and it's just like... Clear, clear. Here, that's what's happening <laughs> yeah. right now, you know, during a uh, climax. Uh, all right, so. Mm, 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 mm. I just love looking at the map. It's like, Atticus, 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 Atticus. 
Uh, you see, as you kick it, like coins start going everywhere. You see some coins that you'll be able to gather up. Um, a wand, uh, mm. an elixir, a scroll, and a book. Hmm. Okay. Um, uh, for this round, I'll do one. Uh, spellcraft check uh, on the wand. Okay. Roll spellcraft. This would be a good one to not screw up. Natty 19, 27. Nice. It's a wand of command. <gasps> oh. Ooh. Okay. With 38 nice. charges. Whoa. Oh, okay. okay. Cool. Good. I think that, that that's his round. Okay. Uh, moving on, it's Sir Julie. Uh, can I do a knowledge planes on what's happening with Sandalus' body right now? Yes. Uh, that's not going to cut it because it's natural too. Uh, so seven. Yeah, you don't know, but it's uncomfortable. Is it still like pumping out? Yeah, gas? it's just like it's sh- it's shooting out like uh, com- almost comically, <laughs> starting to uh, fill the room. Sir Julie will will drive her greatsword into Zandalus's chest just to make sure <sighs> he's dead. Okay. Blood emanates, and now that you've created another hole, more yellow smoke. Oh. Uh, it is Halster's turn. Still, nothing is 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 happening. We're staying in initiative order. Jeez. Can, I, can I also do a perception check on my turn the, for the room mm-hmm. to see if, if there's anything else going on that I not haven't noticed? Yeah, that's not going to cut it either. Twelve. No, you're uh, you're all fired up from the kill can't really get your head straight to perceive Halster um jeez a heal check failed would a knowledge religion check help at all mm. no there's really no thing to you, I think you, you feel like your group knows all they're gonna know about this yellow unless someone crushes a planes is, check do I get the sense that the body is still alive and with us, or could I stabilize it? Could I cast stabilize on it to stop Now him? that Sir Julie has ran it through again, it's it's gone. There's nothing it's totally left. Totally gone. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, hell, uh, hold, I suppose, unless there would be a way to seal off this room somehow. Um really he's racking his brain for what to do is it's not usually even though he can't remember any of his past this is a very unusual situation so he's at a loss yeah Uh i hear you um all right so you're gonna hold your action yes okay very well it is aldo's turn aldo hears atticus's little rat-like claws digging around in the pallet he's like oh so he goes over there to see what he's doing, and he sees these items spilled out on the floor. And so what is left? There's a potion, a book. Yeah, a potion, a book. He took the wand. Uh, there's an elixir. Oh, yeah, the elixir is the potion. Uh, he took the wand. There's an elixir, a book, a scroll. Elixir, book, and scroll. Uh, I'm going to do a spellcraft check on the elixir. Okay. Twenty-three. It's an elixir of truth. Ah, interesting. Nice. Oh, interesting. Truth serum. Okay. Puts that in the old pouch. Bloop. Save that for later. Atticus, ground. Um, he'll do a spellcraft on the scroll. Well, he well he has read read magic. Okay. So I I guess that would break the detect magic that he's been holding but he okay. doesn't detect any other R's right whatever the no. guy was holding and then all right so he'll do read magic so he'll cast read magic cast read magic on the scroll and it is a scroll of summon monster three so you got a nice little hall there an elixir of truth a scroll of okay. summon monster three and a wand of command okay with 38 charges do you move it all no. It's the standard and then the you know the move to pick it up. So. All right. Okay. Which means he also has to put down his crossbow. So his crossbow is down at the moment. Okay. Something happens. Uh, 
the mist now is completely surrounded the body of Zandalu so much so that you don't even see him anymore. Sir Julie saw, got caught one glimpse of him as she made that final stab, but now so much smoke has come out you can't even see where he once was. Suddenly, from that mist, steps a figure. The shadowy, gaunt murderer from your communal dream. <gasps> oh, come on. Oh. And, and you said arms, he can't hurt us. Arms covered in exposed veins and red lesions. Fingernail scrapes apo- across his sickly white head and face. Uh, the markings, perhaps, of those trying to fight for their lives against him. Razor-sharp teeth, seemingly too many teeth, protrude from his round, lamprey-like mouth. And from the sickly flo- fog clinging to him, and many of his tatters flutter freely and just dissolve into the mist. You don't know if the tatters are actually clothes or just parts of the mist attached to his body. He looks like this. No, 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 no. I kind of want to see it. I kind of don't. I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, come on. That's scary. And now now things are about to get... Oh, he's got chains. He was chained up somewhere. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, like interesting. Let's just Broke take one, one more quick look there. How ah. awesome is that? Oh. Oh. Uh, like he steps forth from the mist. Yeah, yeah. You oh, recognize oh, him God. immediately because you saw him in the first dream. He killed Burl and then proceeded to kill all of you. He steps forth, and I need everyone except Sir Julie to roll a will save. Okay, and I'm going to use my ability again. I can do it one more time. Because it's fear, right? Fear or something else? Uh, I'm sorry. (laughs) It works if it's fear or something else. (laughs) No, it's uh, fear, insanity, madness, confusion. Is it any of those? Oh, yes, yes. it's, It's fear. And everyone's still under the effects of bless. So... How many rounds does that last? Last minutes. Minutes, you're there all set, yep. Okay, here we go. Come on, dude. Yes! 25. 25. Uh, Halster. Nine. (sighs) Aldo. 11. No, guys. I need you, not me. You don't need me. You need you. (laughs) Oh, no. Aldo and Halster are panicked for 12 rounds. <gasps> oh. Wow. They must drop everything they're holding and flee from the source of this creature. From, from this creature, as it were, uh, on their turn. Well, See at least Grant's? they'll survive the encounter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they can come back later. I guess they'll come back with... Matthew's backup, backup character. (laughs) And we'll do this fight again in December. (laughs) And, uh... At that moment... (laughs) I wish I failed. (laughs) I wish I failed. Uh, Concentration check. Made it. He vanishes and moves somewhere in the room, as far as you know. Oh... Moving right along, it is Sir Julie's turn. (laughs) This is the most fucked up thing I've ever read for like a boss. I mean, because imagine if all three of you failed, then it's just Sir Julie. That's the fight. It's 5d6 rounds. Wow, so you rolled pretty low. I did roll low. And question for you. This person is not astrally projected, ethereal, haunt, incorporeal, a medium channeling a spirit or a phantom? No. Yeah. It's, it's from another plane. It's a plane walker. Uh, Sir Julie, what are you thinking? Oh, we lost Matthew. Matthew just left. <laughs> He's just so furious. Matthew's like, fuck it. 
I'm out. Uh, we got a good close up of uh, his final moments before he <laughs> succumbs. We need like a go to Matthew pick to put up there. Oh, there it is. There we go, guys. There we go. <laughs> I have a plus two fort bone. Ha 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 ha. I am such a tactical genius. <laughs> oh, oh, mind thrust, mind thrust, mind thrust. On two different shows. Mind thrust. <laughs> wow, Matthew, you're really hard on yourself today. What's that all about? Oh, I don't know. I've just been sad lately. Grant's been crushing my times on the Peloton. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's hard being, uh, you know, above small size. <laughs> uh, let's let's imagine what he would do in this uh, circumstance. I would say run and cower in the corner. Uh, imagine though, when I when I saw that he was making a paladin, I thought to myself, <clears throat> okay, there's a chance you'll make it out of this book, but uh, not after that first thing. Now there ain't no chance. Um, I can tell you right now, after Sir Julie. It's going to be Halster, who'll just run. And then it's Aldo, who'll drop and run. And then it comes around to Atticus. <laughs> uh, welcome back, Matthew. Um, we can't hear you. We cannot hear you, Matthew. Um, nope. Still still can't hear you for Nothing. some reason. Uh, if you're afraid, on. just you can just tell us. Uh, uh, close up on Matthew struggling with his computer. Can we'll you let you know. Yes. There he is. Hey! Yes. Ba, 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 Thanks for rising. Uh, I was just, you know, hanging out here, and then the computer just froze and crashed. And froze and crashed. Uh, which is great, because I hadn't saved my recording. You, you know what that is, Matthew? It's typical Apple. That's what I always say. <laughs> it's what, so typical, it's never happened before in the entire five years I've had this computer. <laughs> if that and ever happens would, to Grant's computer, we're really in trouble. to rejoin the uh, Zencaster link, just for fun. Uh, I'm in. According to what I'm looking at, I'm in. I know, yeah, you, he's right. in and recording. And you're recording again now? Yeah, I uh, lost my entire GarageBand file, though. So. Uh, that'll that'll, that'll save. Good. That'll, right? That'll save, save a crashed file, I think. It didn't. The first part of it. All right, let's try it. Just as long as you're recording now. Sorry for the behind the baseball talk here. <laughs> just have to make sure. Really yeah. just really just ripped the tension out of the room. Uh, <laughs> well, this horrible situation. Let me tell you, the tension over here is extremely high. <laughs> <laughs> Palpable. Palpable. Uh, what are you thinking in terms of your turn? You talking to me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just got recording again. Uh, okay. <laughs> Anything happened while I was gone? Uh, no, no, no. No, you dropped on your turn. It was your turn, and then you dropped. We've just oh, been uh, of vamping. Course. Uh, hold on. Let me load the map. Mm. Let's vamp for a few minutes while I'll roll 20. Oh, well, I mean, we the map isn't going to help you that much because he's he vanished. So uh, he vanished. Uh, uh, Halster and Aldo are panicked. Yep. They haven't gone yet. They haven't run yet. And you are there. And it's uh, your turn. All right. Uh, Sir Julie will take a, we'll just take a guess that he is still in the space he's in. And for shits and giggles, we'll... Swing into that space with a fifty percent miss chance. Okay, tell me what happens. Uh, uh, I'm I rolled well, but missed. I got a forty-five on the concealment. So all right, so you don't know if something's there or not. Do you want to try and move it all? Uh, I will. Yeah, I will actually. I will move towards the door. So I will go take that step, then that step. And that's my, that should be my movement. Okay. Very good. It is uh, Halster's turn. Halster, what are you holding in your hand? Shield and a sword? Red Destiny. Uh, <gasps> the Red plus Destiny. two uh, short sword and a uh, uh, heavy plus one magical light wooden shield. Or heavy wooden shield. You drop those and... Uh, it's uh, it's it's you 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 run away in a random direction, um, so you actually have to roll to see if you uh, instead of running towards the hallway for some reason run to the top, the bottom, or the back of the room. In which case, next round you'll uh, continue going like in that a, direction it's like or a run pin, around. No, it'd be like a pinball at that point. Yeah, you're, you're so freaking out. You have to continue to move away from the source of it at that point. So right. Uh, so we'll say one north, 
two, the hallway, which is probably where you want to go. Three south, four west. D4. Okay, you want me to roll D8? D4. D4, D4, D4. <laughs> two. Two. Uh, all right, so you will run uh, right out down the hallway. Uh, do a dub- double move down the hallway without your weapons and shield. Uh, and then it is Aldo's turn. Aldo, same situation. Were you holding anything in hand? No. I had nothing all right, so that's good. No bombs, just get left behind. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> w- one, two, three, or four. Two, you're going to end up following on the heels of uh, Halster. Anything else, you're stuck in that room. Three. Three. All right, so you run to the south wall just out of uh, instinct, and uh, there's no exit ah. there. Double move towards the south wall. Moving right along, it is now the top of the next round, and it is Atticus's turn. The one time you probably wanted to fail a roll, Joe, you succeeded, and it will mean the death of your character. There's still four uh, mirror images of you, though. I think one got left yeah, behind it's here. Still. Atticus holds it together. He sees this creature. He thinks, I've seen something worse. Hold it together, Atticus. Wait for your moment. Um, I feel like there's a chance that this thing might be, I don't know, might be embodying something that was here once. I feel like there's, I'm just making a guess here. That I think that it's possible based on where we are and what somebody said about like now the, did when they talked about the experimental treatments and stuff and like uh, whatever the, the treatments that were frowned upon and stuff was that only where that other Onerogen was or was that just up on the second floor in general? Um, that that was just on that in that room. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I because I just wonder because with the chains and everything, like I just wonder if he it was imprisoned somewhere. Hmm. Um, maybe even here and experimented on and they unlocked something horrible. That's kind of what I was thinking. But hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, he, he's just going to delay. So he's going to, he's like, like looking around, you know, just holding on to his mage armor and his mirror images to hopefully help him uh, and let this creature reveal himself first. Okay. Uh, very good. I need you to roll a will save. Fourteen. Fourteen, you are shaken. I just said I wasn't. <laughs> now you are. I just said he's not scared. <laughs> You're just a little shaken. Uh, not stirred, though. Uh, there is uh, that... The mere presence that he's exuding into the room, uh, your will is not strong enough to steel yourself against it. It's his turn. The Tatter Man. Sing us oh. a song, it's the Tatter Man. Tatter Man. Sing out a song tonight. Uh, okay. So he is going to. Um, Hmm. Really wish I could smite evil right about now. Mm. Okay. All of a sudden, in the darkness, you heard his voice. Uh, in the I mean, not in the darkness, but in the yellow fog in the room, you heard his voice emanate out of uh, Oliver Zandalus when he lurched up like a puppet and attacked you. But now you hear a soft, sweet lullaby come from somewhere in the room like the uh, theme song to Rosemary's Baby everybody roll a will save And as that sound is coming out, he reappears in the corner of the room. And that sound is coming out of him. Mm. This kid has gone to please stand by technical difficulty. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, 19 for Sir Julie. I uh, I lost everything for a second. Uh, (laughs) Just pure terror. Uh, What did you get, 
Sir Julie, uh, let me see. Sir Julie, this isn't a fear effect. This is a uh, sleep effect. Uh, Enchantment, yeah. compulsion, mind affecting. 19 on the will save. 19 on the will save. Uh, this guy's got so much shit. Let me open up his stat block here. I'm not sure if that's enough. Oh, fuck, it doesn't have the save. Um... Yeah, I know it's Will Negates. What's the save? Well, anyways, hold on to that 19. Um, Joe, what'd you get? Three. That's definitely a fail. Um, and then uh, Halster and... Um, oh, actually, I didn't even think about how bad this could be. Halster and... Uh, Fucking Aldo, you guys roll it as well. A Am will I far save. enough away though? Does that have uh, a range? Uh, the range is yeah over uh, over a hundred feet. Oh jeez! So you hear it echoing down the of hall. The sleep <laughs> of this lullaby. The words you want to hear from your GM's mouth. I didn't think about how bad this could be. <laughs> <laughs> I already after, by the way, after guaranteeing death. By the way, when you're panicked, your will save goes down by two. Yeah, same uh, thing when you're shaken. Uh, so, uh, Halster already rolled, uh, and it was a 10 on the die for a 14. 10 on the die for a 14. Okay, uh... Which I bet will fail. 16, 17, 18. Uh, 14 is a fail. And Aldo? Uh, natural 20. Natural 20. All right, so Aldo is fine, and Atticus, you got... Who got the 19? I did. So, Julie, you're fine. However, Atticus and Halster, you now take a minus two penalty on will saves against sleep effects as long as that lullaby is going uh, and for one round oh, after. Oh, I thought we were just automatically falling asleep right there. No, oh, okay. you, just, you just start to feel really drowsy. Oh, my God. Uh, but the Tatter Man has revealed himself in the room, and it is Sir Julie's turn. Sir Julie, you see him. He's right Sir there. Ju Sir Julie will quickly step up to him. Cease this wretched singing creature, and we'll swing with the great sword. Critical threat. Oh, yes. oh, yes. oh yes. hell yes. Oh, my God. Natural 19. Fuck hell. this guy up. Oh, yes. my goodness. To Roll confirm. to confirm. This is a power attack on, by the way. The kills are alive with the sound 23 of... 23 to confirm. <gasps> that is a confirmed oh, crit. Oh, hell oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Amazing. Let me ask you this. Uh, what is your weapon? Uh, is it? Does it have any special alchemical properties? Is it aligned to a, 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 an alignment or anything? No, it is a masterwork cold iron greatsword. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right, that is a, a critical, and I mean, it nice. is the biggest critical in the history of Strange Aeons. Holy moly. I wish I, I, I like I said before, I wish that I could have sm smote evil, but I used it against the bag lady. Bag lady! Uh, well, you were worried about your life at that point. I don't blame you. I mean, it seemed like a good, it seemed like a good idea at the time. She you had might, me. You uh, might have died otherwise. Um, okay, so we got this one from Andre, three thousand in Minneapolis, Hi. Minnesota. Hi, Andre. Hi, Andre. Um, I feel like butterflies in my stomach. Yeah, like sick too. to my stomach right now. Was so it the pissed. lullaby? Uh, <laughs> come on, we got to get this ugly, pretty before. Ugly, pretty before. You hit your target with such force that it leaves a nasty scar on your target's face. Oh, oh no, yeah. the Tatterman will be ugly now. You're a real beautiful <laughs> face. <laughs> no. Double damage. Double damage, and your target suffers 1d6 charisma drain. No save. Boy. The prom's next week. <laughs> Woohoo. I'm, I, I'm so mixed up with, with second edition and first edition. I roll four dice instead of two and double my bonus, or do I just right. double? Yes. Or I, yes. You roll yeah, four roll, dice roll instead of dice. two and double your bonus. Oh, terrible! Oh, no, oh, God! Oh. Uh, twenty-two oh. points of damage. I rolled three ones. Okay. Uh, the one thing you notice is that not all of it goes through. Uh, there is some sort of dr here, uh, but you do land a, a very important blow. One and I that hope they you will take that charisma drain. I will. Well, how much charisma drain was it? One d six charisma drain. 
Give it to me. Oh, you want me to roll it? Yeah. yeah. Roll it. One. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Christ. <laughs> well, he'll never That's be your elected fourth president one now. out of five d sixes. I, I took it. I took the. I took the image. Uh, okay. Uh, that was Sir Julie. It is Halster's turn. Halster, you feel a little drowsy, but you continue double moving away. Uh, I mean, do you just? Is it? A, I wonder if it's a random direction every time. Or it's just, I, a, think, I think you start with a random direction. I and then think you until you hit a there. direction where you cannot flee further, like where Aldo is, you go in the same direction. Yeah, like he top, panicked, so ran into a wall. He's like, oh, God, and then he turns Andrew, around. Yeah. All right. So you just keep going down that hallway and then, uh, so double move. And then Aldo, it's your turn. You obviously want to start following, uh, but you got to follow along the wall like a crazy person uh, to get out of the room. Atticus, you have delayed your turn, and now it's back to you in the initiative order. Yeah, but I'm asleep. No, you're you're not asleep. The uh, the lullaby you just take a minus two on your will saves against sleep effects. Okay. Um, You'll be asleep ooh, soon and I, if it's and any I consolation. And I see him in the corner. Uh, this sucks. <laughs> and we should have done some library research before this I am going to oh, <laughs> I'm going to open up the scroll and just begin casting I'm begin to, ca- to uh, summon a uh, monster uh, begin casting summon monster three. yeah you lost two allies you gotta bring yeah. out the replacement but the problem is if he puts me to sleep before the end of next, before my next turn, it won't work. Yeah. Uh, well, <sighs> Sir Julie has uh, affected uh, his concentration. He was concentrating on that lullaby, so it has. Uh, it's it's still going. You still take that penalty to your will save, but that's not going to last uh, forever. Okay. However, it is the tatter man's turn. Uh, he's. Go- I'm sorry. Atticus is also going to move away from him. Okay. Actually, I just I'll move. I just realized, by the way, that I. Uh, Remember I said Mrs. O'Lady would have been totally useless in this fight? Mm. You know what spell she did have? Mm. Mm. Remove fear. Oh. oh. Yeah. Now that she, is clutch. She would have had yeah. a moment. Yep. That is certainly clutch. All right. She, uh, she also couldn't have delivered a 23 point crit in this thing either. <laughs> That's true. That is the uh, Tatterman uh, attempts to cast defensively. <laughs> Natty 19. Uh, it was a gimme roll, anyways. And thanks for rubbing it in. <laughs> Let's see what my radius burst here. Uh, one or more creatures within a radius burst. You say if you say twenty, or if you say more than ten feet, I'm gonna be furious. Uh, well, I'm gonna move to get you in there. So, uh, yeah, I'll five foot step, and now both Atticus and Sir Julie roll a will save. Don't forget a minus two. This is a sleep effect. It's an effect called sleep. <laughs> 18. What, what, what were you talking to me about? Yeah, I'm working on it, Grant. Uh, natural 20. <laughs> natural 20. Huge nat- natural 20. What about Sir Julie? 18. She got an 18. Oh, you got an 18? Yeah. I want to hear it from your mouth. I said it already. Right, okay. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, okay, and you don't take the minus two? No, I passed on that sleep. You both pass on sleep. Oh, that is clutch. huge. Oh, if they're running away and you guys are just helpless, game, game. Yep. Huge, absolutely huge. An opening has presented itself here. I was against... waiting for the music until something good happened. Well, here it is. <laughs> it is Sir Julie's turn. Sir Julie, you see this thing. You have withstood against its lullaby and its sleep. The lullaby is now gone. You no longer take a minus two. Um, however, you do see where you hit it. Part of that is uh, starting to close up on his body. Ah, uh, shit. Um, can I do a knowledge check on him? Sure. Yeah, I meant to do that too. Whatever. Pla- planes, I'm assuming? Uh, yeah, you know what? You can do planes. You can do dungeoneering. Hmm. You can do... Uh, yeah, those are going to be your, your big ones. Planes is better for me. Uh, 16. 16. Do both. Okay. Though. You should do both. I could do... I only have... I have planes and religion. Oh. All right. So, 
You know, he's the tatter man. That doesn't really tell you a whole lot. Uh, he is uh, effectively a nightmare doppelganger. Oh. Um, with uh, a spell casting nightmare doppelganger. Uh, you got a 16. I, did. I can give you I can give you one piece of useful information. So you tell me what what you'd like. Uh, and if he doesn't have it, I'll let you ask something else. Is he undead? Uh, no. That is all I can tell you. All right. Because you got an answer. And uh, would you like to take an action now? I would. Uh, Sir Julie will. Uh, She'll just stay where she is and take a swing with the greatsword. Okay. Power attack. Power attack, of course. Uh, natural seven. That's going to be 14 to hit. So Julie misses, swings at this thing, its mouth just dripping green ooze out of its, ra- like a round mouth with jagged teeth on a circle. Um, Grant, is Bless still on if you're not close by us? Uh, there's a range on it. Uh Caster and all allies within a fifty-foot burst measure. Yeah, burst effect. You don't have. You can like it's effective on whoever it's originally cast on yeah. until okay. the expire expiration of the spell. Okay, um, so, so Julie, oh yeah, you're immune. Oh, to no, fear. It's, yeah, it's centered on the caster, but it, the burst was where I was, I believe. Okay. Uh, only uh, right now, Atticus is shaken. All right, Halster and Aldo, I'll let you guys just continue double moving. This is the third round out of 12 that you're panicked. And then it goes again back to Atticus. This is honestly, I thought it'd be a one on one fight with Sir Julie and this <laughs> thing. So uh, you've, got a, you've got a horse in the race, especially if Sir Julie lands another crit. Um, okay. Uh, so tense. Do you remember, I don't want to say what book of what game, because I don't want to spoil it for people who are playing it, but uh, the tower and that end boss, or the the boss, and you had to like fly, it was flying around and you guys had to like climb and fight it. Jade yeah. Region. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. How awful that was. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was, that was the first, that was the first session I played with you guys. Was it really? Oh wow. Oh, you must've been like, I'm never coming back. <laughs> I was playing uh, Chris's character. We didn't even know the rules back then. I certainly uh, didn't. <laughs> Atticus, what are you thinking? You're shaken. Yeah. Shaken it's up to you and Sir too. Julie. Your friends are gone. Um, first, let me do a knowledge check. See if I can squeeze. It's a free action, so I feel like I can squeeze it in between this casting to see sort of what I should bring out. Uh, 21. 21. Knowledge what? Planes. Okay, I can give you... uh, Or Dungeoneering, if that's more effective. The same result. Okay, uh, 21. I'll go ahead and give you uh, two pieces of useful information. Is there something specific you're looking for before I just start? Yeah, what goes through the DR? Uh, Good aligned or silver aligned or silver weapons. Good aligned or silver weapons. Okay. He'll shout that out. And then uh, one more. (sighs) Yeah, uh, dealer's choice. Well, I can tell you this too. He has regeneration and only uh, good spells or weapons can stop it. Wow. Or silver. So that's huge. If you yeah, have that's, it. Uh, this is where you be. need to start looking through your your list, but if there's a silver weapon, who's to say Halster or uh, Alda doesn't have it? And I don't think you have any good aligned weapons. I don't know. All right. Do you want to do anything besides knowledge here? Or excuse me, what would you like to do standard action uh, Yeah, I'm going to use that, that tidbit of knowledge as he's like glancing off the side and also by reading off this scroll. Uh, and that is going to make my decision for me. Uh, I am going to summon a lantern archon. Yes, yes. my favorite. Yes. What is that? They're awesome. It's a, like a celestial being that uh, does good damage and bypasses DR. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, and it has a couple other tricks. I'm trying to read up on it quick so I don't waste everybody's time. Yeah, uh, I can't find a, a, a lantern arcan, so I'm going to give you an actual lantern. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you want to put it? Flanking with Sir Julie? <laughs> <laughs> 
Is that oh it? my <laughs> god! Mad, <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so cool. Uh, gestalt. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Gestalt. Mm, yeah. it's gestalt. Supernatural ability. Nine lantern archons can fuse together as a full round action, becoming a single <laughs> large entity that is more powerful than the individuals. So it's a small uh, outsider. Um, and yeah, it will appear in the square next to him, and then it can attack with a, uh, where is it? I'm sorry. Uh, natural, oh my god, how can I not find its melee? Sorry. It doesn't have uh, melee, it has the two light rays. Oh, oh, it's ranged. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so then it will not appear next to him. It'll appear... <laughs> I just saw the lantern. Uh, it'll appear right over his stuff. And it will fire a ranged ray at him uh, against touch AC. So that is a 12 against touch AC. That is a miss. It shoots <sighs> past him. Yo, oh, what's wait, the, but he's what's got the two, right? Name? Yeah, he has two. Two rays. Uh, second ray. Ooh, Natty 17. That is go. a 20 against Touch AC. That is a hit. But here's a question. What is the alignment of the lantern? Celestial. Uh, lawful so good. It does no damage. He has protection from good on constant. Oh. Okay. He cannot be hurt by good summoned creatures. Uh, oh. Oh. And also he gets a bonus to his AC against Sir Julie. Oh, that would have been useful information. Yeah, that, yeah, that, <laughs> that would have been, been a, a useful piece of information. Number one. Especially when I was doing a scroll of summon monster. Yeah. Three. Yeah, I forgot you were doing that. But uh, cool. it's fun to see it fail from my seat. Oh, my Good. God. Uh, Atticus, fun. that was your action or do you still have an action? Finishing I'm the su summoning? I'm just going to leave. Your action? I'm leaving. <laughs> it's the uh, Tatterman's turn then. Um, Maybe he'll be tired of us. It is. It, it will stand in the fight though pretty well. It looks like it has DR10 evil. Oh, but yeah. evil gets. Yeah. Um, all right. What do we want to do now? Ba, 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 ba. All right. It is going to. Uh, Sir what gets through the DR? Uh, good. Uh, or silver. So it's impossible. <laughs> no, it's it's protection no, you just from can't, summoned Protection creatures. from good is against summoned creatures in general. You know what I mean? You need a oh, good... Oh, I see what you're saying. You need Halster is really what you need. Sir Julie, I don't know what she's got. She might have a good spell, a good line. No. I'm a third level paladin. I'm a third level paladin. <laughs> Dude, you know how expensive good aligned shit is? Like, yeah, it's, it's no joke. Did we find anything that was good aligned? I don't think so, right? I don't have anything on Mrs. O'Lady's sheet. I went back and checked. Yeah, I mean, you just need four clerics. It's, that's how you play Strange Ants. <laughs> you just you just burst just, every haunt out immediately. You just need four clerics. <laughs> you know what I mean? You kill every undead ghoul immediately. Burst, burst, burst. Like, oh, the Archon can cast aid. That's something you can. Yeah, do. yeah, yeah. It, it it does have value outside of attack. Uh, it will go. Uh, it has a uh, a a, sh a switchblade, kind of like a razor in its hand, and it goes to like slash slash at Sir Julie, uh, and misses with the switchblade, and then it just takes a five foot step back. Uh, actually, no. It's got a it's got a a, a claw, uh, and on its offhand, it'll try to claw uh, seventeen with the claw. Miss. Yes, all right, so then it will take a five-foot step back. So just blade claw and uh, cannot cannot land anything. There's oh, some openings here. There's also, there's another thing that the Lantern Archon has that has the aura of menace. So any hostile creature within 20 feet of it has to make a DC 13 charisma-based will save or take a minus two to attacks AC and saves for 24 hours or until they successfully hit the Archon that generated the aura. So I think you gotta make a save there, my friend. So what is it? I, I, I missed that, I was reading something. It's a DC 13, DC, oh man, uh, DC 13 uh, charisma-based will save. Okay, and what happens? That minus one to charisma. <laughs> I, I put it on my on my uh, hero lab. So yeah, I mean, if his charisma score was oh, it's in hero lab. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
his charisma is insane. Um, so, I, but was it even? <laughs> I rolled a twenty nine right. on the will save, um, but it is now Sir Julie's turn. Uh, okay, so Julie will take a swing with the great sword. Oh, she'll take a five foot step up and swing with the great sword. Uh, that is going to be a 16 to hit. Horrible, horrible time to be missing. Um, yeah. Halster and Aldo, you keep running. Are you guys off the, this map now? I... Uh, well, I hit a wall. No, I'm ping ponging five. Okay. Let me know when you need to get off the map, and we'll uh, 30, take it. This is round four 40. of twelve, I believe. And I'll let, let you guys count that out as we keep going. We'll zoom out, and I'll show everyone where we are on the map after Skid moves out. Uh, while they move, it is your turn, Atticus. New round. Okay, um, Lantern Archon will um, move. Sorry. Hey Troy, I actually don't think you're you're immune to that oh. attack from the lantern archon. You just like touched from, by it. it. Yeah, it's bodily contact. Ah, yes. Okay, that's a really good oh. point. Oh, okay. and it was shooting rays at me. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All and right. Good rays too. You still you yeah. still get the plus two defle- you still get the plus two deflection bonus to your AC where it's good. But you but yeah the but it, the spell is just preventing bodily contact. Okay, right. all right. The first one missed. I think the second one uh, was a... Uh, what 20. was it against touch? 20? That was second one hit. All right, so uh, that will cut okay. through DR and uh, stop his regeneration for a round. Yeah. Three points of damage. Three points of damage. Okay? Nice. All right, hey, listen, this is a, f- a book one boss. Three points of damage can uh, can add up over time. And it's, you know that right now his regeneration has stopped for this round. That's the big thing. Yeah. Now it comes back to Atticus's turn. Atticus, you now know this and can use this information. Okay, so the Lantern Archon is going to... And truth be told, I did give you two very useful bits of information. I just didn't give you the exact information you Got wanted. It. Uh, so it's going to move up next to Sir Julie and cast Aid uh, on Sir Julie. Nice. Okay. She um, needs it. Yeah, she needs it. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I had provoke there, so it's going to move here. Does it have this speed? Oh, it's fly 60 feet. Perfect. So uh, it'll move around behind her and cast aid on Sir Julie. Nice. Uh, so that gives you a plus one morale bonus to attack rolls. I'm not sure if that clashes it, with the bless. It doesn't stack with the bless if, that's, if that changes what you want to do. No, it doesn't because really I wanted to give you temporary hit points uh, of uh. 1d8 plus 5. Mm. So... Uh, temporary hit points of natural one, so six fucking hit points. I mean, just get me out of this, please. Get me out of here. Uh, you and did then, your t- that was what the Archon did, but That was t- the Archon, and then uh, Atticus, like me, gonna suck. is just leaving. Um, no, I don't know. Uh, Atticus will... He's gonna delay. If we were in, can you delay? Burlington, where is the Columbus right now? <laughs> this would have been Columbus, yeah. We would have so many shots piled up on the side of the stage. <laughs> oh, dude! Uh, so you many. Would definitely I'd be a, delay I'd be a where mess. You, your summoned creature is its own thing now. Yeah, I don't control it really. Okay. It's, yeah. uh, all right then. Uh, it is the data man's turn. I think I just got to start killing here. Um, you guys are taking too much time. Uh, let's go ahead and take a five foot step. And uh, I need you both to roll a. Let me just make sure that you're not immune to it. So, da, 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 da. I need you to roll a will save against sleep. You don't take the minus two from that lullaby this time around. But if you fail, you will fall asleep. There you go. Uh, yeah, there you go, Troy. You got it. 17. Okay. 17. That's a pass. Oof. Joey Jojo Shabadoo. 10. Atticus, all of them crumble to the ground and fall asleep. There are still multiple mirror images of you, though, yes? <laughs> <laughs> Those don't go away. Those don't require concentration, right? Those are just on a timer. That could save you from a coup de gras. 
the most amazing like multiple coup de grace coup de grace just killing images <laughs> we, we which one got, is it we still got the archon oh man now remember sir julie you could if you didn't want to fight it uh slap or wound him to wake him but normal noise does not it's a standard action to wake the creature um it's one on one the new character the paladin so julie well, you can just wake people up too so can the archon yes you've yeah. got some options here mm. uh, uh sir julie will take a five foot step up against this guy this is take, truly terrifying with- with the aid for those temporary hit points. Okay, uh, natural 14, so 21 to hit with power attack. 21 to hit with power attack with its plus two bonus to AC against good aligned creatures. That is a miss, <gasps> unfortunately. I'm gonna need at least a 22 from you to hit the and you have bless on. I had bless on, yeah. Mm. Hit the old tattoo man. If I hadn't power attacked, it would hit him. Eh, don't let that would dissuade you. Um, uh, just to stop your dancing. Um, unless, uh, just tell oh, me wait. if it's a if it's Troy. a spell like it. Oh. I'm sorry, just, Troy. I have to. I I just la- glanced at the chat and the uh, casting time is one out. round. Hold yeah. on. Hold. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, is we it missed a it on the first one. Spell like ability. We oh. missed it on the first one, so we'll say it's taking the whole round to cast. Um, so you're not asleep, Atticus. But your fail counts. So if he doesn't, if you don't interrupt it, you're going to fall asleep. Uh, okay, but he couldn't move. That's fine. Uh, you can't five foot step and then cast. Yeah, you can five foot yeah, step. Oh, he only moved five yeah. feet. I thought five he moved foot step. Ten. He begins casting sleep. Good catch, everybody. I'm not going to let the first one's done. You guys didn't fall asleep, anyways. I'm going to save your save and save Sir Julie's save. Uh, but Sir Julie just went to hit him. That damage would have been enough to break the concentration. Uh, unfortunately, you missed. So moving right along, Halster and Aldo, you keep running away. I'll go uh, before them because I delayed. Go before, okay. Well, Let's actually, see. I'll just go after because it's going to mess it up with the summon creature and everything. Okay. All right, then um, it comes back to Atticus and the Archon. Okay, uh, so the Archon is first going to fire two rays and try to interrupt him. Um, so, you know what I didn't even think of is this stupid... Dude, he takes a minus four to all these attacks. Not because right. of, oh, I, I stepped up to it. Oh, yeah. for God's sakes! So irritating. And we just f- roll dice. Uh, all right, I'm gonna say he takes the minus four unless I hear differently. I don't know that he has precise shot. So uh, it's just against touch AC. It's gonna be brutal. Miss and miss. That was two natural twos in a row, back to back natural twos. And then uh, Atticus is going to. <sighs> Uh, I'm going to cast my second level spell uh, before he takes me out. Uh, I will cast Bone Shaker. There you yes. go. Uh, so now I got line of sight, a clean line of sight, and I will... <laughs> assuming he is living and has bones. Yes. Uh, <laughs> all right, it is a fortitude save. Actually, fortitude he's a crustacean. Save. All right, fortitude save. This may be, you know, besides not getting that first sleep right, if you, we're doing it correctly now. So he'll have to roll concentration. That's going to be a 15 fortitude (gasps) save. That's a fail, dude. Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. What a huge fail. Your bones got a little machine. (laughs) Yeah, well, you know, mainly it'll be the damage because we want to try to get through that DR. Um,. Man, I would love it if it just went through DR because it's bone, direct bone damage, but probably, probs not. Let's see. This is a great roll. Uh, that's 17. 17 Ooh. damage. 17 um, damage, and that bypasses DR, yeah? Yeah. And uh, and it uh, disrupts him, so he has to roll yeah. a concentration check of 10 plus the damage taken, I think. So DC 27. Yeah, which okay. is probably not out of the question at all. And you said 17 damage. Wow, that is good damage. Yeah, uh, it's 4d6 damage if you fail. It doesn't get... Uh, Ooh, okay. Yeah. Oh, and you know what? His regeneration is off for a round. Uh, let's see. The Archon hit, came back around. Yeah, it's it's back now because the Archon missed. It's back so. now, yeah. Yeah, all right. Uh, but it was off for a round, which is good. Okay, so... 
Whew, all right, big, big concentration now, check. Now, hold here. on a second. I also move the creature five feet. Yep. So uh, I'm going to just move him five feet, and can that provoke? <gasps> yeah. It's leaving a threatened square? Yeah. Does It should say in the spell if that provokes or not. They always say, like, when you bull rush that it doesn't or it does provoke. It doesn't say in the spell? No, it just says uh, you, in addition... Oh, no, it says it does not provoke attacks of opportunity. Oh, yeah, I figured. Uh, all right, great. So I am going... I'm just, I'll just won't move him. DC 27 concentration check to see if I hold on to that sleep spell and put Atticus to sleep. He has combat casting, but the, this wouldn't be considered casting defensively or while grappled, so this is just a straight up... Let's see. Fail. Oh, 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 oh my god. I rolled there a is hope. 19 concentration, oh. so the sleep wow. spell has been canceled, and you do not go to sleep. Wow. And now, Oof. he's upset. Absolutely huge. It is the Tatter Man's turn. It would have been right there. Finish the spell. Instead, he's got to, uh, he's got to go back to the well here. All right, he's gone through a couple of spells. Uh, that's right, he did a vanish. Okay. Do, 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 do. Man, I just... If, that that one round casting time is, is enormous. Yeah. Uh, okay, he is going to uh, slash out at Sir Julie with the War Razor. 18 to hit? Nope. No. Yes. And wow. then a little... A little claw misses as well. Uh, so then he will just uh, step back again. Did he take away your temporary hit points yet? No. No, I haven't been able to hit. Great. All right, so you're getting an opening here. Uh, withstanding those sleep spells has been absolutely huge, especially where it takes a whole round for him to cast. Sir Julie, you've done some damage. Atticus has done some damage with Bone Shaker. What are you going to do? Sir Julie will five foot step and take a swing. Come on, Jules. It's a two-on-one fight. No, no. It's a natural Julie. seven. The protection, 14. the constant protection from good. Sir now, Julie is going to need the power of Saren Ray herself. This has come up in the chat, and I hate to keep bringing it up. Please, but please. Apparently, protection from good is a deflection bonus, and some there are some suggestions that you might be stacking deflection bonuses, and it should only be a plus one from that protection from good. I I don't know if Hero Lab has already accounted for that or not, but I figured. Might as well bring it up since we're... I appreciate you bringing it up. Uh, that does change things moving forward by one point of AC. Uh, <laughs> so it would have hit that other attack. It would have hit the minor yeah, attack. Yeah, that, that, that. that took a whole attack away. That yeah. should. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Like, There's going to be people who are like, ah! This is the game. The game this is you game. do the best you can with the information you have, and when you learn new information, you correct and you move on. I'm not going to wreck on it. I'm going to move forward. Uh, that helps you later in the fight, for sure. It is now uh, fucking... <laughs> Let's see. I can't I'm just get... glad we settled that. Now... <laughs> I'm glad we settled it. Let's all it start with a clean slate. Just go forward. Now we know. Best, now we know. Best foot forward. <laughs> now we know. Um, oh, man. Halster and Aldo keep running. It comes back around. You are off the around. map. You are off the map. All right, so yeah. now just keep a mental track of how many feet you're off the map. Well, we, uh, we just lose the map after this time, but yeah, okay. Yeah, just keep add, adding your double move bonus. Next round, uh, we'll add And that. this was round five, five of 12. Okay. Uh, it comes back to Atticus. <sighs> I also don't mind uh, figuring this stuff out as we go. You know what I mean? Because if if someone knew about the deflection bonus of one of you four and said it in round one, I would have changed it just like I'm changing it now. So mm -hmm. rules are a two-way street. All right. Um, geez, oh, man. Uh, does this thing have eyes? Uh, they are covered up, but uh, so they yeah, are... So it doesn't appear to need sight at all. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, I will... Oh, man. Jeez, so <laughs> nervous. All right, uh, I'm just gonna fire off um, from my 
arcane bonded object, my talisman of revealing around my neck, I'm going to fire off a magic missile. Two magic missiles. Okay. Uh, so I will use that for the day. And What a useful see. spell. Yeah, hopefully it does something. I don't know. This guy might be immune. For all I know. Oh, does he have spell resistance? I didn't even ask that. That's, first, that's a first level boss. Or first book boss. I hope not. I mean, so far it's been unbelievably unfair. So, perhaps <laughs> it's... Are right, so you firing perhaps. it off? Uh, yeah. All right, so two hits. Uh, max on the second. Eight. Eight points of damage. Eight points of force damage. Force damage. Eight points of force damage bypasses DR. Boom, boom. Seems like it hits. Seems like it does full damage. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, it is its turn. Uh, it will. Let's see here. Did the Archon go? Oh, oh no. no, the Archon didn't go. So let me and just fire twice. One um, more chat thing. Apparently the Archon needs to make a save against the Tatterman. And everybody in the chat, thank you for all of your all of your help. Yeah, I mean, this is how we're going to learn. This is the fun part about doing it live. You get a little more, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not honesty, but. Uh, save what? Or be shaken? Like that, that aura? Save? Accountability. Accountability. That's all I, uh, let's see. They're just saying, now they're what? just complimenting me. It's really nice. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. You know, they're just saying nice things about me. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to just... I don't know. I'm just going to roll a, a, a save. Ooh, that's 18. Will save. Okay. Against what? I don't know. I don't I know. know. It's far <laughs> if you don't know the whole rule, let's not shout Frightful presence. <laughs> Frightful presence. Frightful presence. Frightful presence. Ah, yes. So it's subject to the frightful presence as well, and you rolled an 18. Yeah. All right, so the Archon's out of there. It should have been out of there in the first round because <laughs> it failed. And so just like Aldo and uh, Halster, it's gone. So uh, 18 adjusted? Yep. Gone, so. Get it out of there. Get that sexy lantern out. Uh, all right, now I think it's, it's a, good. It's, this is a, this is a well-designed encounter because it immediately eliminates... At yeah. least half of the people at the table from playing. Yeah, really, <laughs> so, really smart. So that just yeah. an aura, you just walk in the room, and an aura over a DC eighteen will save at first at third le level. Well, third at level, third level, third level in a first book of an adventure. Yeah. It just eliminates players from playing. Yeah, yeah. it's like you could go home early. You can spend some time with your family. You can have <laughs> a nice dinner. If we had gotten to this earlier, we could have had dinner on time. I, I know, mean, I I'm know. all out of Cheetos, so I'm about to. <laughs> I know. <laughs> We're Grant, just sitting there. All right, here we go. Uh, oh, lantern's gone. So we're we're good then. Yeah, we're good. So it's his okay. turn. So now it's his turn. Uh, he is going to let's see. Da, 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 so da, take da, away da, those temporary hit points, Sir Julie. Oh, you don't okay. have them. You never did. No, no. Well, uh, no. We, we just learned this now. I'm not going to retcon that. Just like I'm not going to retcon the thing from before. You can keep oh, that. Okay. Um, we figure it out as we go. D -d 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 okay. Uh, hmm. All right. Uh, he is going to try to cast defensively here. Made it. Uh, he's going to try and do a touch attack on Sir Julie. So I've got Ooh. a hit against your touch AC. Is, I, don't, I don't like the sound of that. Not great. <laughs> Probs not great. Uh, 14 against touch. Yep, you got me. Going to need a fortitude save from you. Is I want to call a, you Aunt Julie for some reason. Is this a fear effect? Uh, it is not. Uh, 17. 17 and you pass. He's trying to give you a touch of fatigue. Just like, oh, oh, oh just sap your strength a little bit. Um, By the way, right. I don't know if the chat mentioned this, but I just thought of something, which is I had, and I looked it all up ahead of time, and then I forgot in the heat of the moment. I had to roll uh, a die to cast that scroll because it's higher than my caster level. But the DC was just six. So I had to roll a caster level check against DC six, and I rolled a nine just now. Just letting you know. Because it's a third level spell, mm. and I am only a third level character. 
But it's a very easy thing to do if you if it's on your spell list. It's actually pretty easy. Uh, all right, it is Sir Julie's turn. All right, Tatterman. This has gone on long enough. Uh, okay. We banish you. I rolled a 21 again, which we now know hits. <gasps> oh right. my god, that is a amazing. Hit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Box oh, cause. Six and a five. Oh. Uh, 18 points of damage. Nice. 18 Fantastic. points of damage. You hit it, and it crumbles to the oh ground. My yes! Oh, yes! Oh, fuck that thing. What? Fuck that fucking Oh my thing. god. <laughs> Sir Julie might actually be a, 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 a howitzer tank dis disguised as an elderly knight. Amazing. She, she spends every, every next round stabbing at it until its regeneration is clearly gone. <laughs> well, you're, you're, you're still in initiative order here, so uh, you no. hit it. It hits the ground. Uh, do you move it all? Do you do anything? No, Bring the music back hot. <laughs> I stand right on top of it. You stand, we can't share it script. All right, so you just stand there and look over it. Uh, all right, moving along, Halster and Aldo, you keep going. Uh, you hear a cheer from deep down the hall, but you're, uh, you're already gone on your way back to the first floor. It comes back to the top of the next round. The Archon is now following uh, suit, uh, but Atticus, you are up. You see Sir Julie land a blow. Um, oh, man. Okay. A killing blow. Um, I am going to run up, double move, and while I do, I'm going to draw a, my, and this is, by the way, from like one of the first two or three shows, uh, I think, a Masterwork Silver Dagger. Oh. You had that the whole time? Yeah, but I mean, I'm useless in melee, but like, if if it like comes up I'm and it's prone, I might have an AOO that I could do. Or I could give it to Sir Julie, but it's still gonna do net less damage, I think, than you just going over the DR with your greatsword. It does stop the regeneration though. Yeah. Right? Or is it is it stop the regeneration or just cut through? Stops the regeneration. It does both. Oh, okay. Oh that's prone okay. now, it's a so minus. Yeah, four. I could I could hand it to you. If you'd like. Sure. Okay, I'll hand it to Sir Julie. Be in is much it? better hands. What is it? Just a silver dagger? Masterwork silver dagger. Mm. All right. So you uh, walk up, draw it, and hand it to Sir Julie. All right. Uh... Things keep happening. It's uh, Halster and Aldo still running away. It comes back or uh, so, excuse me, it is it's Sir Julie's turn. Okay. Uh, Sir Julie will stab it with the the with the masterwork silver Get dagger. It. Okay. Uh, uh, roll a will save. Okay. Uh, sixteen. Okay. So you just come down on it. Uh, it's prone. Uh, so how much damage do you do? Uh, let me just make sure power attack is on. Okay, yep. Uh, eight points of damage. Nice. Eight points of damage. So you strike it with a silver dagger. It's you're just you're making sure that you're cutting through the regeneration so it doesn't come back. Uh, Coup de grass, right? It. Coup de grass. Uh, it it doesn't uh, it doesn't seem to do anything uh, at this point. You you hit it with all your strength, but it doesn't have the intended effect. Not quite sure what's going on here. I pass uh, it back to Atticus with my move action. Hand it back to Atticus. Halster and Aldo keep running. <laughs> this thing is useless. <laughs> uh, <laughs> to take come, this back. It comes back to you, Atticus. Atticus just throws the silver dagger down the hallway as hard as he can. <laughs> <laughs> it hits the Archon and kills it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Atticus is going to, uh, probably with some fear in his eyes, uh, just sort of like say to Sir Julie, like, I don't feel good about this. Fall back, fall back. And he's just going to move back 10 feet, uh, just sort of like stumbling back in fear. Okay, uh, Sir Julie, roll a uh, perception check. Yeah, when she stabbed him and nothing happened, he's like, mm -hmm. uh, It's 15. 15. You look down, you stabbed him, like, why didn't that do anything? Why can't I do a coup de grace? You look at its hands, and it, the hands are moving. 
They've been moving for the whole round as he was feigning death and casting sleep. (laughs) Both of you roll a will save. This fucking shit. (laughs) Roll the single most important will save of your life. I knew that feigned death ability would come in handy. We 100% did this right, right? Yes, you have to roll a will save when you interact with it. That's why I had her roll a will save when she hit it with the razor. Did he roll a concentration save? When I stabbed him with a dagger. He didn't. That's fair. That's fair. How much damage did you do? Eight points of damage? Eight points of damage. With with a silver dagger. It's fine. Natural 20 on the concentration check. (sighs) Okay. uh, Now I would like your will save. Here it comes. Coming in hot. Roll of the whatever. Hide. 13. Matthew? 15. You both fall asleep! Oh my god. Oh my god. I don't know why this is shocking. Unbelievable. And that was a natural 12, which nets a 13. So, like, not even a bad roll. Da dun. Permadeath. And he stands up over you. And we keep moving in initiative order. Halster, Aldo, keep Seven. running. Seven rounds. Seven rounds. Atticus, you're asleep. Hmm. Hmm. What to do, what to do, what to do. I mean, just un- Limited sleep. No, I have X amount of spells per day, and I can recast uh, until I run out of spells. Unlimited. Actually, you know what? Sleep. That was my last first level spell. Last spell, last sleep, and it worked. I use vanish and three sleeps. Um, touch of fatigue is a zero level spell. Uh, okay, just to make sure we get this right, because this could be uh-huh. a TPK. The chat would like me to check the number of HD. You can do that on the number of creatures you can do it. 4 HD. And aren't we 6 HD? Mm. Together, yes. Yeah. Together? You add up your HD? I don't know. Yes. I, I, that, it's a first level spell. 4, Four HD, HD of creatures. Of creatures creatures so, yeah. with the oh, fewest yeah. HD. But creatures with the fewest HD are affected first. We have so you among, can only put one of us asleep. Right. Okay. Among creatures with equal HD, those who are closest to the spell's point of origin are affected first. So just Sir Julie is asleep. Okay. Yeah. Huge difference. Huge difference. Did that also, That's huge. That didn't apply to the fear panic aura thing, right? No, no, no. You're going. Thank you, chat. Thank you, uh, chat. That's great. Oh, my God. That's great. You know, and I remember that now. It was years and years ago I had a character that could cast sleep. I don't remember who it was, but it, that's why it's, it's a first level spell. It's not supposed to be. After a certain point, it becomes pretty useless. Right, right, it's only right. Four I, HD read, I read that the wrong way. I thought it was all characters 4 HD or less. But Sir Julie does fail and fall asleep. So, and you still have to both roll it because had she passed and you fail, Atticus, even though you're farther away, you would crumble. So yep. now Atticus is the only thing standing between uh, Sir Julie's permanent death. And maybe Wake not. Her up. I Wake mean, her you know up. this razor, uh, you don't know what kind of damage this razor is doing. She'll get a fortitude save against the coup de gras. Um, so, in an odd turn of fate, I'm right. Halster and Aldo, keep moving. Atticus, you are up. Atticus will step up behind Sir Julie and... Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! And then just shove her as a standard action. Shake the shit out of her. Uh, all right. It's its turn. Does it want to turn its attention to Atticus Graham? Graham? Maybe get, get rid of some of these... Uh, Get rid of some of these uh, mirror images. It strikes, uh, well, it moves five feet and then strikes at Atticus uh, with the razor. That's going to be an 18. Damn it. All right. That's a hit. And there's, there's six of you all together or there's five? Five total. Okay, so we'll say uh, a five on a d6 hits you and a six will ignore. Okay. Six will ignore. Oh, so no hit and all the images stay up. <laughs> no. Awesome. Uh, and then I rolled a four, so you lose one image. And then he goes with the claw. 
Uh, misses with an eight. Beautiful. So just shoom, let me slide forward there. Uh, Sir Julie, it is your turn. You're prone in front of this thing. Sir Julie will stand and uh, can I pick up my greatsword as I stand as part of that move action? No. And that'll provoke. I'm, I'm, I'm planning on provoking regardless. I think that'll provoke, right? Standing yeah. provokes. Yeah, standing, standing provokes. provokes. So yeah. can you grab it as part? Well, that's a move action. It's part of a move action, sure. Okay. Lay on, then, lay, hit me with your, your My best AOR. shot? Okay. Uh, my, my A... Oh, oh, is a, a miss with a 16. And well, what's your, is that your prone AC any worse against a uh, melee? My prone AC is a 17. Okay, so you're all right. All right, and then she will swing with the greatsword. Come on. Come on, baby. Uh, 22. <gasps> oh, that is a hit. Dude, come this on, man. I 15. never expected you to fake your rolls. This is... This is unbecoming, uh, Matthew. I need a grant cam. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. A grant type theft. A grant type theft device. Uh, that is 13 points of damage. 13 points of damage. Still up. But it's <laughs> like, it's just bleeding black blood, staining its tatters. Uh, now yellow mist is, is, is seeping out of its holes as well, clinging to its body, trying to... Uh, Trying to close the holes, close its regeneration ability. Halster and Aldo keep moving for their seventh round. It comes back around to Atticus. What do you got, Atticus? That's not true. That's our eighth round. You are incorrect. Round, excuse me. You're incorrect. You are a liar. Um. Okay. Atticus. Man. Um. Atticus is going to take, uh, oh, yeah, Atticus is going to move, he'll take a five foot step. Okay. Right? Yeah, he'll take a five foot step and he will fire off a ray of frost at this thing. Okay. Which, if it's not invulnerable to cold, we'll go through DR, uh, if I can hit. So... Big touch By the way, AC. do we still have bless, or does that go away when you run away? It's a, it's, it was a burst centered where I was standing, but it's not centered on me. So yes, okay, I still have it. Great. Uh, so right now we'll need that, that silver dagger. Here we go, Natty sixteen. Hold oh. on, I got to do the precise shot. So that is so, so it's a seventeen against touch. Should do it. Touch AC against you of sixteen. Yes. Wow. Yes! Uh, okay. Wish it was a crit, but I'll take what I can get. And that is two points of cold damage. Two points of cold damage. He is still standing <sighs> for the time being. Every little bit counts, though. It is his turn. Regenerate a little HP. Little H Pizzle. And then, uh... We'll attempt to... We'll attempt to uh, cast a touch spell again to try and fatigue Sir Julie. Natty 17 on the concentration, or cast defensively rather, and then goes to touch you. I need a fortitude save. Uh, oh, wait, did he did he make the... Oh, it's I'm, not a touch attack. Oh, yeah, no, I have to make the touch, but I'm would sure you roll on the fortitude? Yeah, I, I made it. 18. 22 on the fortitude save. Uh, you are right. You are not uh, fatigued. So he's just trying to sap you because I think he knows the end is nigh. Sir Julie, you are on. Uh, finish him! Finish right. him! Let's see if this will work. Oh, Matthew, Matthew. Okay, good. Wait, isn't that at an angle? <laughs> Can you see it? I can yeah, kind of. Oh, no. Oh, man. What, what does it say? Touch of law. I think that's go a 12. Up, go back, go back. 11. 11. 11. That is, oh, it's going to miss. It's an 18 to hit. Uh, God, Julie. Julie, Matt, no. Matthew, call in with your uh, phone for your next turn to the All Skype right. call. Click on it, and I'll uh, and I'll get it ready. Okay? <laughs> we, don't, oh, okay. we don't have time for this. We don't have time. Next turn, uh, it's ninth, fine. Ninth round of Aldo and Halster do. comes back around to Atticus. Atticus, what do you got? We could do this. We could do this. Uh, Ray of Frost. Yeah. Sil silver dagger. <laughs> I had to roll really high, though. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, and the silver dagger thing too is seems preposterous, but 
Yeah, you're going to need to stop that regeneration if he does go down, or he'll just keep coming back up. Yeah, I know. I'd give it to Sir Julie, but it's just... I wish he, I wish that you didn't hand it back, but just because uh, it was a tricky move by LaValle. Um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, all right. Uh, you know what? I'll do it one time. Why not? Fuck it. I'll move up and stab at him with the uh, silver dagger. Okay. Bang, bang, Atticus, if it, a silver if it dagger. hits and does damage... Down. I mean, it. I don't do any damage. So, I mean, basically, don't do any damage. Would it have to do damage to stop the regeneration? I don't think it does. I no, think you just, just have to hit it. You can always do one, one minimum one damage. That's true. That is true. Uh, just got to hit it. Go. Uh, nope, that is a 12 to hit. <sighs> Slices out, doesn't hit. Uh, it uh, once again goes after Atticus with the Razor uh, 19. Yeah. All right, uh, there's f- four of you left four now. Four Atakai. All right, a four hits you on a D4. That's a two, so we lose another image, but you're okay. okay. Buying uh, rounds, uh, buying uh, rounds. I'm, I'm using the, the claw as my offhand because I can do whatever the fuck I want. It's 11 misses. Uh, so it is now Sir Julie's turn. Sir Julie, you're Sir Do. Yeah, Sir I'm, Julie, if you hit it and step back. Atticus says. Because uh, okay. he wants to free up the space so he doesn't take the penalty on Ray of Frost if you don't get him down in this shot. Alrighty, I will. Mm. Mute, mute your phone, Matthew. Working on it. I'm trying to do this all at once, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fuck. <laughs> One moment. All this right, really isn't worth it. There we go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I am going to r- swing. And then roll. And then try uh, to hit it. Let's see. <gasps> oh, let me cut to it. Come on, baby. What is Look it? Look at that. Cracked. Is that cracked? That looks cracked to me. It's not cracked, Grant. Look at right, it. It's a 19. It? It's 19. Everyone needs a critical threat. That's a it's critical threat. That's a critical threat. <laughs> <laughs> Great sword. Oh, my God. All right, roll that the confirmation right, get that, on get that. Oh, 16 camera. on the die. Oh, nice. Hell so that's yeah. a 23. The, that is confirmed crit. Yes! Amazing. Amazing! Oh, see? No need to step back. Stay right where you are. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, yeah, fan critical. Okay, fan critical. Uh, right. Oh, let's do international edition. Uh, yeah. Especially because we started off this, this stream by just shitting on Australia. <laughs> let's, uh, let's make up for it. Josh from okay, go Melbourne. Josh from Melbourne, Australia. Hi, Josh. Life... Uh, finds a way. Finds a way. <laughs> <laughs> How fun! How funny! Very funny. Uh, you have faced extinction before, and yours is not on the menu. Double damage. You may swap initiative order with one creature, friend or foe. You may not ask the GM about initiative scores, and the swap does not take effect until the start of the following round. Double damage. So yeah, it's just double damage. Hold on, Matthew. Oh, okay. You ready? Now. Oh God. One. Not great. Six. Okay. Sorry, the, the lighting in here is very dim. Just read the fucking dice. <laughs> it's really not worth it. Uh, 19 points of damage. He falls. He yes. crumbles to the ground. Jeez. Don't care. <laughs> yeah. Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> it comes Watch back around hands. to you, Atticus, while they're still running away. I'm assuming you hit him with the silver dagger to end the yes. regeneration. I, I watch his hands and just keep stabbing his hand. Over, yeah. over, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> Sir Julie comes up. Make sure you take it b- beyond con, and you have defeated the Tatter Man. Oh, oh, <laughs> my, God. God. oh my God. God. Oh. Oh. What God. on earth do you do without Sir Julie? What? Yeah, on earth seriously. Pumping out oh. over 40 points of damage? If Mrs. O hadn't died last game, like we would have been, it would have been a TPK this session. She That's died. What I'm so we I live. went into this weekend thinking that was this was the party mrs old lady and the three of you and i'm like there's there's no way they need a paladin completely <laughs> fucked it would have been totally fucked or a cleric a cleric would or a cleric been yeah yeah well yeah. grant you know if it all comes down to that frightful presence well, well uh, uh sir julie if i hadn't been frightened would have fright uh, uh freed me up to do cleric things i, I had yeah. to take the role of the tank until you came along and triumphantly saved the day along with atticus's help 
I'm after, so stressed right now. <laughs> after a few <laughs> Me more, too. after a few more rounds of uh, Aldo, uh, you and uh, Halster running away, you uh, come to, you get a grip, and uh, I'm assuming you like start heading back up there tentatively to see what's going on. Yeah, we were 300 uh, feet away. <laughs> start, just go out the front door of the asylum. Just get the fuck out. Breathe in, <laughs> take a deep breath of that fresh air, and just keep walking. <laughs> uh, well, then, meanwhile, uh, if, if, if you do return, or if uh, do just, return. just house returns, yeah, you come up and you see uh, Atticus and Sir Julie standing over uh, the dead bodies of Oliver Zandalus and the Tatter Man. He's got <laughs> Atticus, Atticus blood. multiple Atticuses just have blood like all over their faces. He's just like, <sighs> like looking maniacally at you. It, it faked death, feigned death once. I won't let it do it again. <sighs> you remember we're both still just stabbing at it, yeah. sawing, <laughs> off, sawing off its head. We'll be done in a second. <laughs> uh, it like deflates as it's as as the life and the 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 yellow fog within it uh, goes away. It, it deflates. Like, uh, it was just full of air, and now it looks like a suit that someone would wear. It's horrific. You already searched those mattresses. If you start collecting up the coins, you find about 50 gold coins. You got the Wand of Command. You got the Elixir of Truth. You used the Scroll of Summon Monster 3. You see these sketches, uh, unsettling though they may be all around the place, you realize that Sandalus, despite his mania, uh, was talented. And that if you were to collect all of these artworks, if it was something you're interested in, they might be able to catch a price in the avant garde uh, of Versex, Versex artistic circles. But the one thing that jumps out amongst all of this is the book. And on the binding, it says The Chain of Knights. He's got chills. <laughs> Atticus will walk over and grab it. You open up a book and uh, it's a tome. It's going to take a lot of time to really dig into it and figure out what this is. Why was Lowell so interested in it? Why was Lissandro so covetous of it? And what role did it play in what happened here, if any? Among the book's numerous elaborate medical sketches of the brain, depictions of pressure points and chakras, meditative mantras, and methods of achieving lucid dreaming, you also see spells inside of it that you can learn. It's and a freaking spell book. <laughs> and arcane rituals devoted to breaching the boundaries of dreams. <laughs> Dude. Atticus is like, oh, this is the most amazing thing you can find. Oh, man. If you really start to dig in it, I mean, I don't know how much time you're going to take, but I'm sure you're going to want some time here to regroup before you go downstairs. You can search the body of the tatter man. He didn't have any armor, but he did have a, a plus one war razor. That was the weapon he was using. Oh, nice. A magical war razor. I'm just going to save all the checks that you would do. Um, and then Alver Zandalus uh, didn't have any armor, but he had a plus one light mace. He had an oil of magic weapon, a Ooh. potion of bear's endurance, and a potion of cure moderate. He used up his potion of invisibility as a last ditch effort to try and save himself, though his mind was not really uh, driving the bus. But as you dig into the chain of nights while maybe... Uh, the rest of them are gathering all these sketches off the walls. To yeah, see Atticus is just glued in, it's like... You see that it was written in the late 1200s by a Kelishite doctor slash seer known as Valhadas. And it really focuses on exploring the brain as an organ, as the lens of perception, as a, and as the throne of something more, unlocking more with the brain than just rational thought. A cursory glance of it is, at first and foremost, a text on the anatomy and workings of the brain, and the first several hundred pages or so concern themselves with diagnosing, analyzing, and treating via therapy, drugs, and basic surgeries, numerous physiological and psychological aff afflictions. But as you get towards the back of the book, the final third, 
It starts turning towards more esoteric topics such as the source of nightmares, accounts of the dimension of dreams, and descriptions of the creatures that live in said dimension. <laughs> you want to study it for like an hour? Mm -hmm. It's going to yeah. take that much time to pull down all these thousands of drawings. As you do so... All the images go away. His like deflection shield vanishes and he doesn't even notice. He's just sitting there. Yeah, yeah. Sitting and any one of you could do this. If you spend an hour with the book, you can uh, immediately after use the hypnotism occult skill on lock once per day, even if you're not capable of casting psychic spells and if you don't possess the psychic sensitivity feat. Also, after consulting the tome for an hour, you get a plus two bonus on a single knowledge planes check related to the dimension of dreams. Mm. It's also full of some spells. The spell Dream, the spell Dream Council, the spell Dream Scan, Dream Travel, and Nightmare. Most notoriously, as you are just glued to this reading it, it contains an elaborate and some say flawed ritual for releasing one's dreams into the material plane. Wow. And while the, well, while the right functions, the side effects of failure can create dangerous beings known as onerogens. So mm. this released nightmare is probably what... Laos or Losandro did to Zandalus that created these onerogens that caused the rift mm. and let all these nightmares in. Wow. As you dig deeper, you realize that like if someone is killed with a nightmare, if the Tatterman had put you to sleep and then killed you with the nightmare spell, which you can now learn, an hour after you uh, are dead, you come back as a creature like a ghoul or a ghast. Mm. Wow. So he had been going around killing patients and doctors and they're rising back up as evil aligned ghouls and ghasts as they're pulling down the papers from the wall and you're reading the book we just black out from there first of all you all level up till fourth level yes, yes. <laughs> first and most importantly from there, we just see a series of vignettes. We see patients and asylum workers alike wander out onto the ground surrounding oh. the asylum. Yes, no mist! And they're yeah. just reveling together in the return of a familiar sky and the dawning sun. They look out at the waters, which they couldn't see, not even hours ago, and breathe in the air around them, no longer choked by yellow fog. We see a scene of two ghouls and a ghast melting away into the floor, no longer empowered by the transformation that came about from the Tatterman infecting them in their sleep. Meanwhile, other nightmarish aberrations, some that you faced in the asylum and some that you didn't, they simply melt away into the shadows, perhaps returning to the land of dreams, or perhaps just biding their time until another unknowing victim falls asleep unprotected nearby. We see orderlies and other able-bodied women and men confronting and gathering up the more dangerous inmates and as peacefully as possible ushering them back into the asylum where they can be held safe until the order is restored in Briarstone. We see Dr. Ren Elborn and Winter Klaxa working together to round up survivors from both camps, sussing out who's free to leave if they choose and who needs to stay. Some of the patients, though they're free to leave, choose to stay because they know they need help. We see Winter offering critical medical attention to the injured and attempting to restore some semblance of order. As Winter directs two former doctors of the asylum towards people that need immediate care, she sees the four of you exit the asylum and walk towards her outside. She smiles warmly. She knows you saved the day. She's like, we cannot thank you enough. You have done a great service to humanity. Whatever evil was terrorizing this place seems to be gone, for now at least. She shakes her head. It's like, what, what great loss, though. So many innocents perished or, or worst. Either way, I thank you for all that you have done. What 
will you do now? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I would like to leave this asylum for yeah. good. I don't have a lot of good memories here, or memories at all, but I must venture out to make new ones. I feel a calling of some sort tugging me away from here. Aldo, what do you say? Would you join me to leave this place? Yeah, best friend. I'd love to go walk about too. This place is not fair dinkum. <laughs> I, indeed, no fair dinkum. In fact, it's rather rooted. It is utterly rooted. This entire endeavor was completely rooted. Mm. <laughs> May I ask, I did not want to pry when you were in the midst of your investigation of this place, trying to save all of us, but did you discover anything about yourselves? How you came to be here? Yes. We were brought here by uh, Laos. Uh, is that right? Laos? Laos. He's the one that brought it. By Laos, uh, as amnesiacs, suffering from uh, lost memories. But over the course of the last several days, I've I believe mine has started coming back. And I think, I don't know, I think this book deserves a long looking into, and that's what I plan to do. The Count, do you know why he brought you here? No, uh, uh, he simply told, uh, I believe he told the asylum administrators that uh, in exchange for access to this very book, we, they would need to treat us. But I don't feel as if I need to be treated. If I was, to be, you know, have the choice of voluntarily staying here or not, I would not stay. Though I can't speak for Sir Julie. Sir Julie, would you stay? I have been within these walls for 47 years now. I think it is time I rejoin the world. <laughs> My regiment awaits. The darkness closes around us. You have not seen the types of horrors that are yet to come, but your bravery will be most valuable in the fight. You know that it was the Count that brought me here in the first place. Yes, I Him remember. Ab abandoning his duties, we were all dispatched the Sisters of the Maiden Choir, and I came here to find out his connection, and it seems that now you have a connection to him as well. You should head to Thrushmore. Investigate your connection to the Count. No doubt my travels will take me there as soon as I can once I see this place return to order. I think, and I shudder to say this, but this might just be the beginning of something. If the Count is out there doing things like he did here in the world, then this is just a microcosm of what is to come. Either way, whether you go to Thrushmore or not, if you do choose to leave, just follow that road there. I've told there's a boat tied to the end of the pier, and I've mm -hmm. sent some of my people to secure it. It's too small for everyone to board at the same time, but just tell them you have my permission to be the first to go and then we'll ferry the rest of the survivors to the mainland in as many trips as necessary. Thank you, Winter. Thank you very much. Thank you as well, and may Phorasma guide your way. Hopefully we will see each other again. And may she guide yours and sweet dreams. And, of course, praise log. <laughs> A praise log, yes. That guy in the background. <laughs> like, he just walks walking, out and he, he turns. <laughs> so she leaves you and you start walking down this road. And though the, the yellow mist <laughs> Though the yellow mists are gone, it's still grim out. It's wet and it's foggy. But you can see kinda of through the fog, little water up ahead. The thick gray mist makes the visibility less than perfect. However, darting out of the mist, you see the ancient standing stone from Zandulis's painting. Oh, right. oh, right. Although ominous in appearance, as you get closer to it, maybe you detect magic, it 
radiates no magic and frankly it doesn't have any discerning marks on it that make it any more than uh, an oddity that Zandalus would have been able to recreate it so perfectly having never seen it but as you pass by it up at the head in the mist you see a humanoid shape standing veiled by the fog maybe 40, 50 feet away or so do you say anything? Hello Ooh. there. Who goes there? Oi! Hello? From out the mist walks Crossbow Jackson. <gasps> he says, as if you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be your captain this evening. Hop aboard, friends. <laughs> Next stop... Thrushmore. Oh man! Dude, end of book one. Oh, yeah, man. Troy. Good Woo. job, Troy. Good job, man. We did it. We did it. Good Finale job. of a book is always a, As amazing. If you yeah. did it now. As if you did oh. it. I was, I was, I was crazy about to bastards. Ask, I was about to ask about Crossbow Jack. <laughs> <laughs> He's there, guys. Thank you for joining us all weekend long. It's a little Ooh. late, but the winner of the dice tonight was Christian Largent Man Bear Hugs on IG. Yeah. Congratulations. Hey. Thanks for taking part in the contest. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. We'll see you in book two. Bye we'll bye. see you in book two. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.